Terry Smith is suing her ex-husband, Tony Smith, for three ATVs and a lawnmower. Court cut in order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2148, Smith versus Smith. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Smith, this used to be your husband. You haven't been married in a long time, but after your divorce, you sort of remained friendly and you had some business transactions together. What kind of business? I would refer real estate business to him and uh, refer flipping homes and the construction work. Did you take part in that as well? I did. In what year were you divorced? 2015. So this briefly is what I gather from the complaint and the answer and the counterclaim. At some point, according to you, you purchased three ATVs. Those three ATVs were originally supposed to be used in business. We purchased more than three. How those, many did you those purchase? Those were the three that were left. It was um, 14 of them that we had. And when you purchased those, you purchased those together as part of a business? No, those were mine. I purchased it. The business, 14. The business was mine. Yes. 14? Yes. You purchased them, you paid for them? Yes, I did. Okay, and you can prove that to me? I can. Okay. Do you agree with the fact your former wife purchased the 14 ATVs? Yes, I agree, but it was underneath an LLC that was formed. I don't care whether it was an under an LLC yeah. or a little umbrella or a big shoe. She bought the ATVs. Yes. So one of the things that's in question is the ATVs now are in your custody? The remaining ones are in my home, yes. Three? Yes, ma'am. And you want them back? I do. She bought them. Why doesn't she get them back? Because, Your Honor, there is an outstanding invoice for work that I have done for her. What? It's construction work and other odds and ends that was helping her. That's not part of your counterclaim as a set off, sir. That's not what you say at all. Okay, and also there is a counterclaim. You have a counterclaim. That has to do with your truck. So there really is no reason that you are holding those ATVs. Are they new? No, they are, they were demonstrator models. There's one new one and two demonstrators. Okay, so within five days, you make arrangements to get those, okay? I assume that you have children together? No. no. So I assume that you are two civilized people. I don't know whether you need a police officer to accompany you to get those, but within five days, make arrangements to pick them up from his house. They're yours. I will, thank you. Are we then finished with your claim? Now, there's a lawnmower, an electric zero-turn lawnmower. Okay. It's also part of that claim. Okay, I sort of remember that. Is that an old lawnmower? No, it was purchased in May of 2021. And who was it purchased for? He asked me, since he could not get it on credit, if I would buy it for him and the next real estate transaction that I referred him, he said when he got paid, he would pay me the $4,800 back. Okay. And so when I asked for it, he said he had put it in a separate savings account to save it for me. And I said, well, I don't need you to save me. My got money. it. So you have the lawnmower? Yes, ma'am. You picked that up with the ATVs. Thank you. Got it? Thank you. Perfect. Now we have to come to your counterclaim. Your counterclaim is sort of interesting and can be, I think, probably equally swiftly disposed of. After your divorce, you needed a truck. You didn't have any money or credit, according to what I've read, and you purchased a truck in your name for him. And the agreement was that you would make the payments on the truck because you couldn't get credit. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. The truck was purchased in what month and year? August of 2020. How much did the truck cost? 58000 somewhere in there. And how much of a down payment did you put down? 500 bucks. Is that right? Yes. That's good. You must have had good credit. I do. Good. And what were the monthly payments, sir? 900 and I can't remember exactly. It was under 1000 It was 940 something dollars, I think. And you paid for the truck the month of August of 2020 and all through 2021. Until when? When was your last payment on the truck that you made that you can prove to me that you made? I have all the payments. Just tell me, when was the last payment you made it, on the truck? It was August of this year. August of 2022. Yes, ma'am. And that's what your bank records will indicate, yes, that you made a payment of 900 and some odd dollars. 
August of 2022. And in what month did your former wife repossess the truck, which was in her name? It was uh, September 20th. Now, you're going to tell me why you repossessed the truck. Let's talk about the violations. Driving without tags, only two months. When we forget or we're traveling and we don't get registrations for our cars, we don't drive those cars. Because if you're driving with expired tags, that's against the law. Terry Smith claims her ex-husband, Tony Smith, owes for three ATVs and a lawnmower. Tony is countersuing for the value of a truck. Okay, you made a payment of 900 and some odd dollars. Yes, ma'am. August of 2022. And in what month did your former wife repossess the truck, which was in her name? It was uh, September 20th. Okay, now you're going to tell me why you repossessed the truck. Yes, that truck's first payment was due on October 30th of 2020. I made the payment on November no, no, no. 28th. That, no, I'm not interested okay. in history. Okay. I'm interested in, he says that he was making payments on the truck. You say he stopped making payments on the truck, which is why you repossessed it. You didn't want your credit to be at risk. It was two of the first payments that I made, and I said, I'm not doing this again like I did on the last truck where I make every payment. But he, no. the insurance, I asked for the insurance to be paid since April of 2020, and I've requested this on June the 28th of 2022. And I said, here's the insurance premiums I've paid on the GMC truck since, since we've had it. And it was $1,596. His reply was, I'm happy to pay the insurance on my truck, but don't just dump two and a half years on me at a time. I will need to break this up into three increments. This was June. I don't have any money. The insurance and taxes, the taxes this year is the first time he's ever paid taxes on the vehicle. And it was one year late. He drove on an expired tag for a total year. The reason... Is that I... just a second? Is that correct? I'm sorry? Did you drive on an expired tag no, for a year? No, ma'am. It was only a few months late. But so you drove... It wasn't with... an entire year. How many months? Two months. Well, that's too long. I agree. And was your agreement that you would maintain the insurance for the truck as well? That was something that we discussed. And because of the... What the, re the real reason she actually agreed to purchase the truck, we had a previous truck that was also, I was driving, and because of the LLC that the truck was under, it was a very high commercial insurance rate. So she felt that, that it would benefit her to get another truck and come out from under the commercial rate that she was paying for insurance. And she was gonna put it in a group insurance policy. Where is the truck? Where is the truck? You've had possession of the truck. That's correct. So you get all the benefit of the truck, and she gets all the detriment. I'm just referring to, the, to what No, no, I'm just... Uh, what I'm not getting from you, sir, is any sense of... The whole idea was, this is going to be my truck. As soon as I finish making all the payments on the truck, the truck is going to be mine. Mm -hmm. Right? That's correct. And if you didn't make payments on the truck, absolutely... She has a right to repossess it, if that was your agreement. And you acknowledge that that's your agreement, right? That is the agreement, but I have made every payment, and I oh, have paid all the taxes. Well, the word paid all the taxes eventually. Didn't pay them when due. That happened once. Paid the, didn't pay them when due. Pay them eventually. What about the insurance? The insurance, I agreed to catch up and pay her back for once she told me what it was. Okay. I never received a, any information about the insurance amount until she sent it all in one... Okay, she sent it to you in one email. Lump. That was in June, and you said I couldn't pay it, and she repossessed the car in September. Between June and September, did you make any insurance payment? No, I did not. Why? It was a lot of things going on at that time that there was money owed to me as well from her. So it was a lot of discussion going back and forth about that. Well, but one thing is clean. You know about the insurance. And if there's money that she owes you from construction or real estate or whatever it is, you have to put that in compartments. Where is the truck now? I took the truck back and it is sold. Did you ever tell him? He wouldn't talk to me. He hasn't talked to me since May. So you had the truck for approximately two years? Yes, ma'am. 
And how much in total did you pay for the truck? The exact amount added up was $18,736. So you paid approximately $9,000 a year, right? Correct. Your Honor, we had an agreement of $1,200 a month on the truck to cover the insurance and taxes up front before it was purchased. That's not true. Well, if you paid approximately $9,000, Mr. Smith, and you used it for business, correct? That's what you used the truck for. So you paid approximately $750 a month if you paid $9,000 each year for the two years, 1870. You say the payments were $900 a month. That means that there was a shortfall. Can I, can I bring us... It, it was more than two years. It was August of 2020 until... Uh, September. August of this year. Well, that's two years. There's also a down payment. Of $500, I'm not... That... Okay. So that's $750, sir. I always have a problem with people who are no longer married and no longer happy with each other, where one party has the obligation and has all the liability on a vehicle, including their credit and their insurance, when the other person is being either irresponsible or blinking at certain violations. Let's talk about the violations. Driving without tags, only two months, when we forget or we're traveling and we don't get registrations for our cars, we don't drive those cars. Because if you're driving with expired tags, that's against the law. I would like to point out, if I may, that the bill for that obviously went to her address. It was not given to me. You... Now, that's not my... I, I understand that I need to be aware of it, but I, didn't, I never received that bill. I gave it to him the very Just month it came Just in. Just a second. That's not true. Just a second. You're a big boy. You know when your car has to be registered, you have a little yellow tag on the back like everybody else. And insurance, you know, you're supposed to pay insurance. That was your agreement. You were supposed to pay insurance. And you didn't pay insurance. She's going to show me how much was left on the loan and how much she sold the truck for. If she sold the truck for more than was left on the loan, the difference between, you looking at me, the difference between that belongs to you. Terry Smith is accusing ex-husband Tony Smith of wrongfully keeping three ATVs and a lawnmower. Tony claims Terry owes him for the cost of a truck. Okay. Well, are you working now, sir? Yes, ma'am. Great. She sold the truck. How much did you sell it for? Forty-eight thousand. And how much was left on the loan? Forty-eight. It was it even. Well, show me. Was it even? Oh. I'd like to see that. Ooh. So forty-eight thousand dollars was. He paid eighteen thousand dollars. Hang on one second. I got it. Mm -hmm. Can I submit this to you? you what is that? Are you, this my bank statement showing the payment. No, you here. told me I okay. accepted it. Okay. She doesn't dispute it, and I accept it. I do have a copy of the title here somewhere. What I'm looking for, Mr. Smith, just so that you know, what I'm having to look for for me, she's going to show me how much was left on the loan and how much she sold the truck yeah. for. If she sold the truck for more than was left on the loan, the difference between you looking at me, the yes. difference between that belongs to you. Oh, I see. Because you paid it, right? I see. Yes, ma'am. Got it? That yep. fair? Did she tell you that she sold the truck? No, ma'am. He, he went and bought a truck two days later, so he was able to buy a truck. Okay. I mean, Would you find those papers for me while I'm, you're I'm looking for those sorry, papers for me? I Mr. Can't. Smith, did you buy another truck? Yes, ma'am. Good. Did you put a down payment on it? Yes, ma'am. And you own it now? Yes, ma'am. And you're driving it now? That's correct. What would you do with a second truck? Well, I was forced to buy one because it... I, well, I, I, no understand you were, I understand you were forced to buy one, sir. But if you had the truck and you weren't going to use two trucks, you would sell this truck for whatever amount you sold it for. And if there was any overage, you'd get to... I offered to purchase the truck from her. In fact, she understood that I was planning to purchase the truck from don't, her. Don't tell me what she understood. Right now, you don't need a truck, and I'm going to find out whether or not she has to give you any money 
as a result of what she sold this, the truck this for. This bill of sale does not have the amount on it. I didn't realize that. I'll have to get that from. Well, from this where is the I time to it. get it. I'm sorry, I did not realize it didn't have it on there. Okay. Oh, you sold it to a company. I did. Oh, okay. Not to a private party. No. Is that the same company that you purchased it from? Uh, no, I purchased it from a different dealership. Okay. Do you have the exact amount that the loan, the extant loan was? The original loan was six. No, no. I'm sorry. The exit loan. Yeah, the was, exit. It was between um, forty-eight and forty-nine thousand, give or take. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. And the hang truck on, was, on. and hang the on. truck. I have it. Was purchased for fifty-six, so that amounts for his payments plus interest. I have okay. it. That's the difference of what they gave me. I originally put the down payment on that truck as well. He did not. That doesn't matter. Yeah, that was the difference they gave me in the sale. Okay, so this That's is the, the difference, difference yes. between oh, what was on the loan. Exactly. Between what was on the loan. Exactly. And this. Okay, exactly. so the excess, sir, was $2,225. She put in the deposit for the truck when it was originally purchased of $500? She did not. Yes. Who did? I did. I did, and I have a copy. I have that in this record right here. Show me. We added tires. We added all kinds of extra stuff I don't care. and everything I don't to care. it. I, I don't I paid care. for that I don't well. care. I don't care. Yeah. This is actually... Just show me. It's on my phone. Can I show it? Can I... From 2020? Yes, what had happened, the amount actually came off of this statement copy. Let me see. Can I submit this to you where I made the two payments on the truck when he first started? I made the very second lie. payment and the fourth yeah. payment on that truck because he wouldn't make it. I also notified him on June the 20th that he had 30 days to get the truck in his name, and I never heard anything. Oh, you can't notify him no. within 30 days to get it in his name. That's not the agreement. Let me see. Yeah. There's this. It's in yellow. Yep, purchased authorized August 22nd, and this is 2020. 20. 20 for $500. Okay, so the difference of $500 that came out of your account brings the total excess that she received $1,725. She's coming to pick up her lawnmower within five days and her three ATVs. At the same time, she's going to give you $1,725, which is the difference between what was owed on the truck and the profit that was made that she didn't pay for. We're finished here. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I think it was fair. Well, it was a little less than I thought I was going to get back from it, but and there's a lot more to the story that obviously I couldn't get in. Well, I, I mean, I had the truth, so. She understands why that is, because there's an outstanding invoice from me for work that I've done that she's refusing to pay for. I have supported him since, since 2003. Construction work, I did a lot of uh, planning and helping her with her current home that she's living in. It is just one thing after another, and I could never owe him one dime. I mean, everything was fine between us. Has trauma bonded me and manipulated me and gaslit me for all these years and kept me around just in case other relationships didn't work out. Until she found out I was seeing someone else. No, no, no. I had been asking for everything of mine that, that he kept for and held hostage um, for a long time before that. But he's probably had many more before that. I just didn't know about him. But I'm happy. I, w I was thinking he was making me think that we were reconciling while he was using me. I don't see us talking anymore. The bank is finally closed, and the bad bargain has just been a nightmare. It's been hundreds of bad bargains. No more business ventures. You see, it's always a mistake, unless you're married, to co-sign a loan for anybody, yeah. a boyfriend, <laughs> a somebody. An ex-husband. An ex, <laughs> an especially an <laughs> ex-husband. Yeah. Because I think what you said was true. There's always one person that gets no benefit and gets slighted and has their name on the line for their credit for future purchases that they want to make, and the guy who gets to drive the truck. And the guy who gets <laughs> to drive the truck. Of course, he says that the reason she got all hot and bothered is because he has a girlfriend now. I would have felt a little more sympathy towards him had he not gone out two weeks later and <laughs> bought her. He's suing her home buyer, Dante Zarzosa, for an unlawful eviction extortion and emotional distress court come to order all rise have a seat please hello judge 
Case 2156, Hickendorf versus Zarazosa. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Hickendorf, who is this gentleman? This was an attorney I hired in Mexico, kind of in the middle of the night when... He's an attorney? In Mexico. Okay. And my witness. Okay. So, trying to piece this complaint and answer together. You purchased a home from Mr. Zarosa? No, Your Honor. He purchased a home from you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, got it. He purchased a home from you in Mexico? Yes. Where in Mexico? About five miles north of Rosarito, maybe 10 miles south of the border. How long have you owned the home? I owned the home about five years. How much did you pay for it? When I bought it, it was 180. How much did Mr. Zarzosa pay for the house? 245. On what date did he purchase the house? February the 9th. Were you present at the closing of the house? I was. When you closed on the house on February 9th, how much money did you receive? I was supposed to receive... No, no, no. You were supposed to receive $245,000. How much did you receive? I received a cashier's check for $15,000. 15000 15? 15000 I received cash, 4500 and I received the next day through a, a wire transfer 4.6 million pesos or something like that. I have the paperwork. Just tell me what that translated to in dollars. It was $220,500. Okay. Well, if you have proof to how much the translation of pesos to dollars is, that means that you got a total so far without the down payment. Did he give you a down payment? Yes, 5000 I was paid for my house. Hmm? I, have, I was paid for my house. No, I understand that. But this is the problem. Mm. Mr. Zarzosa says that when he took out the mortgage, he increased the amount that he was borrowing so that he had closing costs covered to the extent of, I think, $3,800 or $3,900? It, it was a total of almost $10,000. No, 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 no. Oh, that's, $3,900. That's what I asked you. What's, what's $10,000? $10,000 comes out of nowhere. It was a difference, you said, of $3,900. Yes, ma'am. And so he wanted from you the difference. Well, the realtor gave me... Not the realtor. He wanted from you... The realtor told me that. I've never really spoke to Dante, except for on February 22nd and the time that he came and looked at my house. But the realtor sent me a fake statement, which I looked at, because it's a high school kid's piece of paper, and no. I said I was not making a refund. Okay, well, you have to make a refund if you were paid more for the house than your bargain for with the purchaser. That's true. That's true. And the bank told me on April No, no, 1st, they can't tell you anything. Oh, really? If they documented something to you, then I'll read it. But you can't tell me what a bank told you. First of all, banks don't speak. Now, I'd like you to get what Mr. Zarzosa is handing me. This is from the bank. Well, I can't read this, but what I can't read is in Spanish, but I can read the numbers which indicate that you received, Ms. Heckendorf, a total of $249,544.22. Let me see. May I see that, ma'am? Absolutely. Because this is what that bank gave me right here. And I did go with my witness to the bank on April 1st, and they told me that you that can't, was... The bank can't tell you anything. They told me that was the they correct can't, amount. A bank can't tell you. They can give you a document, which I will read, but a bank can't right. tell you anything. This is not really a case about this contract. Yeah, it is. It started this way. They're saying that that bank sent me the wrong amount of money? Yes. That's oh. what it says. That's what that says. That's what this says. That's what that says. I imagine anyone can write what they want, but I was not paid the wrong amount of money. Well, the bottom line of it was, eventually, you gave him back $2,800 of the 39 that he said that he was entitled to. Is that correct? No. Ms. Heckendorf? No. You never gave him $2,800? I signed a contract and gave him $2,800 under duress. He took my dogs and my cat, and he took I, my property. I want you to understand what I'm saying to you. When mm -hmm. I ask you a question, I expect an answer. Mm -hmm. You gave him $2,800, and you gave him the $2,800 because he believed and told you that he had taken out 
extra money in order to cover his closing costs. And you got that money, and he wanted that money back because he was going to have to pay for it through his mortgage. I have never heard that these were closing costs. This is the first I've heard about closing well, costs. Well, I'm going to tell you and this. I'm going to stop, never heard about stop, closing talk, costs. stop talking. Mm -hmm. Stop talking. Okay. And I'm keeping it very simple. Okay. You're going to want to keep it very complicated, and I, madam, are going to keep it very simple. So the bottom line is you stayed in the house for free. Karen Heckendorf claims her home buyer, Dante Sarzosa, extorted money by keeping her pets in property. Dante is countersuing for false accusations and lost wages. Good. This is your piece of evidence. Mm -hmm. Your piece of evidence says that you got $249,544.22. No. That's what it says. No, it doesn't. Okay. That's what it says. You gave him $2,800. He wanted $3,900. You gave him $2,800. What you're suing him for is... He also is, wanted $2,500. I'm going to dismiss your case. Okay. It's just as easy for me to send you back to Mexico. Once you closed on this house, according to what I looked at, Ms. Heckendorf, you asked if you could stay in the house because your new house wasn't ready to close escrow. Is that correct? That's a yes or a no. Yes. And so you closed the house on February 9th, and he allowed you to stay in the house. When were you supposed to vacate the house? March the 1st. I paid Just a, that That's a date. March 1st. Mm -hmm. And between February 9th and March 1st, how much did you pay him in rent? I gave That's him the money for the casita. Just a second. Yes. That's an amount between February 9th and March 1st. 2370 So that was a month's rent. Is that what you received? No, Your Honor. How much did she pay you in rent between February 9th and when she was supposed to vacate March 1st? She no. would have paid you rent Nothing. in advance. Nothing. Show me proof that you paid him anything for rent on February 9th. Did you ever receive from this agent $2,370? No, Your Honor. Well, do you know who he is? Yes, I do know. That's the realtor that uh, represented both of us on the purchase. And you never received this was on February 9th. He acknowledges he signed that he received $1,620 as in for the last month's rent and $750 security deposit as well as prorated rent of $120. I don't know what prorated rent is for. It was for... Um... The end of January. They moved in a few days before. Who moved in? The people that rented the casita. And that's part of the house? Yes. What is that? I have two houses on the property, the one I lived in and the casita. And Dante gave me a email that if I gave him this money from the casita, that I could live in the front house until March the 1st. I have that Just email. Just a second. When he bought the house, mm -hmm. did he or did he not buy the casita as well. Yes, he did. A, so he bought the casita as well. So it belonged to him. This rent belonged to him. Only so what I do you mean? It. He's not giving you anything. If he buys a house and there's another property, he owns that property. He owns whatever rent was due for that property. So what you're saying is, let me cut to the chase. What you're saying is, you claim, he said to you, I've just paid you a quarter of a million dollars for your house which includes the casita. Your house isn't ready yet to close escrow. I will let you stay in the house free if you let me keep the money from the casita's rent. Yes. Oh, and fine. I have an so email. that the bottom line, don't, don't speak, it doesn't look like you're losing so and far. I may not be finished with you. And so I had I, you're casita. speaking, you're trying to speak over me. Well, and I'm keeping it very simple. Okay. You're going to want to keep it very complicated, and I, madam, are going to keep it very simple. So the bottom line is you stayed in the house for free from February 9th or 10th until it was supposed to be until March 1st. That was your understanding. You were staying in his house for free. 
I didn't have to rent the casita. I don't care whether you had to or whether you didn't have to. You were staying in your house that you sold to him for free until your new house was ready. That's a yes. I felt that. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you feel. You sold him your property and mm -hmm. you took advantage of a piece of that property, the casita, in order to negotiate yourself a free three week rent until your house is ready. Now, you may stand there and look at me in that smug way, but you and I both know that that was a deal you made for yourself. Yes, I agreed, okay. I agreed to rent the casita ahead of time before I moved out and give him the money so that I could stay in the property until my house closed as for one week. Pretty, pretty tricky. May have been March pretty, the 6th. Pretty tricky. Bottom line is you stayed in his house for free. Okay. And then... What the rest of the case is about is that you claim that he changed the locks on the door before March 1st, and in the house you had your pets, and he held ransom your pets until you gave him what turned out to be $2,800. That's your complaint. He changed the locks on February 28th. Where 22nd. were you when he changed the locks? February 22nd. 22. Where were you when he changed the locks? I was lock? in my office in San Diego. Okay. And how did you find out that the locks were changed on the door? Dante um, sent me an email that I found later admitting to what he did. But no, I, don't. I asked you a question. I was at my I, office, and he called me on the phone, okay. and he said, this is Dante's our And I have... My way. My way. Mm -hmm. He called you in the office. Mm -hmm. That's how you found out he changed the locks. Yes. That's an answer. Approximately mm -hmm. what time did he call you in your office? It was about 6.30, 6.45 in the evening. 6.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And tell me what you claim he said to you and what you said to him. This is Dante Zerzosa. I have your two dogs. You're never going to see them again if you don't pay me $3,900. Now, that wasn't the first time you had heard about this $3,900. That was I not the first time. I heard about it on February the 9th. No, the right. 8th. Sorry, February the 8th, I'd heard about it. And so you told him after that that you would, or you told him, or you told your lawyer, is that you? Yeah, now me. you can stand up. Sure. I met him. Shh, don't speak. Okay. On what date did you get your pets back? Well, I didn't actually get them. My friends went and begged for the animals. Don't, don't, don't tell me what they did. They gave them to... And they gave them to my friends. Stop, no, please. Okay. Sit. No. Karen Heckendorf has accused her home buyer, Dante Zarzosa, of extortion by threatening her pets. Dante claims Karen owes him for making false accusations. Your last name, sir, is? Mena, Your Honor. Mena. Uh, Mr. Mena, you're an attorney in Mexico? Uh, yes. Okay. Are you a real estate attorney? Yes, civil attorney, real estate as well. You understand what this is about, and you understand if you're a real estate attorney, that sometimes people take a mortgage that's beyond what they need in order to cover their closing costs. You understand that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's not an unusual thing. I bought and sold many homes. A lot of people do that. And when were you first made aware of the fact that the defendant was at least claiming that there was an amount that he had incurred debt on by way of a mortgage in excess of what your client in Mexico was supposed to receive in the amount of $3,900? February the 22nd, something like that. 222. And when she came to your office, now we no longer have attorney client privilege, sir, because she's brought you here as a witness, so you're going to testify sí. to every conversation that you Absolutely, have. Yes. Do you understand that? Absolutely. Okay. She came to your office after she found out that the locks were changed. Actually, I was at home. That was at night. So when for the first time, sir, did you hear about this money that the defendant was claiming that he was owed? Uh, Mr. Dante, um, uh, call me. I want you to answer my question. Yeah, yes, I'm... My question is, when she called you the night of the 22nd at your home, did she tell you at that time or soon thereafter that there was a discrepancy that he was alleging with regard to the closing fees? Not actually, no. No, she didn't tell you anything. She told you that he just illegally evicted her and changed the locks. Yes, and at the same time, because of the some situations regarding a deal she has on the sale of the property. Your client knew 
as of February 8th that the defendant was alleging that she owed him money from the closing costs. That's clear. That's what she told me. Mm -hmm. Now, they had had clearly ongoing discussions about this mm -hmm. from February 8th or 9th when the deal closed and she got her money and she's living rent free. So what I want to know, when did she share with you, not that there was an illegal eviction, not that her pets were in the house, when did she share with you that he was claiming that she owed him money? And I'm not excusing self-help. When did she tell you that? Because she knew it at the beginning. She knew it before she called you. I have the um, uh, communication from Mrs. Uh, Karen. At the time we filed the complaint in the DA office, this is a district attorney office. This is the time when she uh, expressed me the whole facts. Oh, so she didn't tell you the whole facts when she called you at home on the 22nd? Uh, no, because she was very bored, worried. She was concerned regarding okay, the baby. Don't tell me that. Okay. That's it. Now I got it. So I got what you're dealing with. I understand who I'm dealing with. Okay. On what date did you get your pets back, Miss Heckendorf? The 22nd. Okay. What time? Well, I didn't actually get them. I got them the next day because my friends went and begged for the animals. Don't, don't, don't tell me what they did. They gave them to, and they gave them to my friends. Stop it, please. Sit. Yeah. I just asked you when you got your animals back. So you got your animals back on the same day as he changed the locks on the house. They were given to friends. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So they were returned to you the same day because if they were given to your friends at your direction, your friends were your agents. Yes. Good. Only the dogs. He had my cat the next day. Did you have a cat or is it an outside cat? Is it an outside cat? It's an outside cat that lives indoors and they, they okay, put it's the an doggy outside. door down so the cat couldn't get out. Okay. He told me he had my Got cat. It. Okay. When did you give him the $2,800? About 5 o'clock on Wednesday the 23rd. Is there a writing of the exchange of that money? I'd like to see it. I can't read this. The plaintiff has a translated version. Can I see the translated copy, please? Can I speak? About what? About that paper. Yeah. The, he was the one that drew it up. He could tell you, Your Honor, and... and, and, and no, 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 I want this. Did you draw this up? Can I see it? Yeah, sure. Kevin, give it to him. Thank you. Did you draw that? Y yes, I participated. What does it tell me? It's translated. Uh, don't speak. Do you have the translation of this document? I yes, that? I gave it to you, ma'am. Okay. Okay, number five, very clear. This is the agreement that Mr. Zarzosa receives from Ms. Heckendorf $2,800 for concept of refund of pending payment. The previous amount is received fully. Therefore, the debt is liquidated. And number six, the seller, Ms. Karen Heckendorf, grants the broadest waiver derived from the investigation file presented before the district attorney's office. I assume that that was your complaint mm -hmm. and with a file number filed against Mr. Zarzosa by not keeping any legal action present, past or future, derived from the present business. This is the police report they're talking about. I don't care what this says, is you've settled all of your disputes with each other. This says you've settled everything that had to be settled. Okay, but what the translation suggests is by this document, each of you understood that you were giving him money, he was not going to follow through with anything that had to do with the criminal complaint or with a criminal complaint against him. You went your own merry way. Am I crazy or is that what this document says, sir? You are the lawyer. Yes, it says so. That's what it says so. So I want to know why you're all here bothering me. You settled everything. You got back your stuff, you got out of your house, you got your personal property. He has a counterclaim for false accusations and loss of wages as a result of whatever. This document says you've resolved everything with each other. So why are you here? I did not sign that document under usual circumstances. I hadn't had any sleep and I was coerced. And he said he was going to burn my furniture 
or he was going to sell it in the year that it would take me to prosecute him under this Mexican uh, contract. Put it down, sir. The case is over. If he wanted to The sue case is me, over. You're a pretty savvy lady, madam. You had an attorney that you consulted. He was there when this document he wasn't was signed. On the real I, uh, deal. He was, he was the, only on goodbye. this Goodbye. We're done. The case is dismissed. So is your counterclaim. This Bye. court is adjourned. This was really a case about Dante taking my animals for hostage and extortion. I didn't steal anything. The only reason I agreed to give him $2,800 was because he said he was going to burn or sell my furniture. I'm going to enjoy my house. Thank you, Karen. That lady was never intimidated into anything. I don't think so either. <laughs> she knew she had gotten an extra few bucks at the closing. She knew that she was really living there rent-free, which is really very nice. You buy a property, mm -hmm. letting her stay there for almost a month. I have little sympathy for him because he resorted to self-help, went to the house, changed even though he knew she was still there, and changed the locks. But that document clearly indicated that both parties at some point said, OK, enough. I'm getting out of the house. I'm getting my belongings. My pets are back. Yep. Here's your money. And finished. Well, when you make a settlement, you've made a settlement. You don't get to make one settlement in Mexico mm -hmm. and another one in California. Janice Grimm is suing her client, Dallas Lee, for child care services, late fees, and property damage. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2175, Grimm versus Lee. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Ms. Grimm, in what state do you live? Missouri. In what county? Jackson. You have a daycare center? An in-home child care, yes. For how long? I started September of 2022. What is your house like? I have a single family home with a finished basement and then like an attic type, it's two bedrooms. House has two bedrooms? No, up in the attic has two bedrooms. It's technically a three bedroom house, but it has made six rooms. And how many children do you have? I currently have seven. How old are they? 14, 13, 11, 8, 5, and 3, and one, 18 months. 3 and 18 months? I'm sorry, she's 4 now. She just turned 4. So the older ones go to school. Does the 5-year-old go to school? Yes. And the 8-year-old goes to school? Correct. So you have two little ones at home? Uh, my 4-year-old goes to early childhood, half a day. So you have one child at home during the day? Correct. And one half a day? Yes. And you have three children? Yes, ma'am. How old are they? I now have a three-year-old, a one-year-old, and a five-month-old. And those were the children that you enrolled in her daycare center? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Grimm, what kind of licensing do you have, an application that do you have to make in order to run an in-home daycare center in Missouri? So in the state of Missouri, as long as you have under six children, you do not have to have a license. As long as you have six children in total in the house or six children... That I'm watching. ...that you're watching? Correct because my school children are not considered watching, like, under the law. Well, you certainly have to watch your 18-month-old. Well, yes, he's the only one. That's why I've always kept five children or less. It is your claim that Miss Lee entered her children into your program. She paid you for a certain period of time. She owes you for two weeks. Correct. And with those two weeks, two weeks that her children were actually in care. Correct. Which two weeks were those? They are the last two weeks of October. Of 2022? Correct. And the children were in your program? Correct. Miss Lee, were the children in Miss Grimm's program the last two weeks in October? Yes, ma'am, they were. Did you pay her for the last two weeks in October? No, ma'am, I did not. How much were you supposed to pay her? For the last two weeks, it was supposed to be $600, because our agreement was 600 every two weeks. OK, so it was supposed to be $600. Yes, ma'am. So now the ball is in your court so far. Ms. Grimm, we're not talking about a late fee. We're just talking about these two weeks. Correct. First, tell me your reason for removing the children. I removed my children out of her care because my children, every time that I picked them up, it was either they were harmed or injured or my son, my three-year-old, would tell me something had happened while I was gone at work in her care. My son had told me on numerous accounts that she hit him herself. And then he also told me that her 15-year-old son, or 14, I'm sorry, had also spanked him. And when I did ask him, well, I asked her, actually, I said, who is Trey? Because he said, mommy, Trey hit me. We were getting in the car. They normally do help me get in the car with my three children, seeing I have one who's barely you're walking. Get, you're getting... 
you get going all over the place. Yes, ma'am. So they normally help me get in the car with my children, so they were outside with us, and my son said, Mommy, Trey hit me like this. I didn't know any Trey, so I asked her, who is Trey? And she said, that's my son. And he said, that's me. He was standing right there next to her. He said, I'm Trey. And I said, Bryson said that you hit him. And he said, yes, I hit Bryson. He said, I popped him because Bryson wasn't doing right. Bryson didn't want to go to timeout. On what day was that? That was on October 25th. And what was the last day that your children attended? October 27th. Okay, so despite the fact that Trey, your Trey? Yes, ma'am. Slapped the three-year-old, said that he slapped the three-year-old, mm -hmm. you let him stay there for an extra two days? Yes, ma'am. Just, just, that's it, yes. Now, where were you working that you had your children in daycare? I was working as a CNA. What is that? A certified nurse's assistant. Where? It's a, um, Nursing like a home? rehab. Yes, ma'am. When did you start working there? I started working there in September. September of 2022? Yes, ma'am. Beginning of September? Yes, ma'am. And when did you stop working there? I stopped working there October 27th. That was my last day. If I were to call, would they tell me that they terminated you or you quit? I quit. Did you quit on the 27th? Yes, ma'am. And what about now? Are you working? I am. Who are you working for? I work through a temp agency, working per diem at different locations as a CNA. And who takes care of your children? My stepmom. My children, I... Just a second. And when did you start that job? I started that job about four weeks ago. So, in December? Yes, ma'am. Late November or so. You left the children there until the end of October. It couldn't have been so disturbing for you, madam, to leave the children there until the end of October, another six weeks, if you felt as if they weren't getting adequate care. And if you did, that would be on you. Janice Grimm claims her client, Dallas Lee, refused to pay for childcare services. Dallas is countersuing for lost wages and emotional distress. So, a relative has been taking care of your children? Yes, ma'am. Not all three of them. I had to send my two sons, because I had to rearrange my daycare situation, I had to send them back to Texas to be with their dad. So, two of them went back to their father? Yes, ma'am. And who do you live with here? I live with my dad. What does he do? My dad is a nuclear medicine technologist. So, your stepmom takes care of one of the children. My five-month-old daughter, yes, ma'am. Who's in the house. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to tell me why you didn't pay her for the last two weeks. So, my children began in her care September 12th. September 13th, she sent me a text message while I was at work, and she said, I want to let you know little mama was bit today by my one-year-old on her cheek. She sent me a picture. I have this. Not interested. Okay. I mean, it's not that I'm disinterested. It's that don't show me anything from September, madam. You kept your children with her into October and through the end of October. And if anything was so concerning to you that you thought your children would be at risk, I'm certain that you would have discussed it with your father and your father would have Ma said to you, don't speak. Okay. And your father would have said to you, if you have a problem with the children, don't let them stay there. What you did... Okay, I can see that you're dying to tell me something. What? Yes, ma'am. My daughter had no other choice but to keep her children in care because I work a full-time job. Let me explain something to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Your daughter was living with you? Yes, ma'am. Right. There is always an alternative, sir. I have young grandchildren, and I would say if I was legitimate, legitimately concerned for their health and safety, I don't care what it is, stay home and take care of your children. You'll have a roof over your head until you find appropriate take care. And if you didn't do that, then you're not much of a grandfather. Well... You can't use something that happened in September or early October to say, well, that's why I didn't pay the last two weeks. So you can't, make, you can't make excuses, sir. I'm telling you, I'm a grandmother and I've had little children. I don't care what you had to do. Quit my job, whatever that job is, and say, we'll all stay home and take care of the children until you find, or you stay home and take care of the children, I'll provide you with whatever basics you need until you get the right daycare. 
And if you didn't do that, thing. don't tell me that your daughter didn't have a choice. There is always a choice she when your choice. babies are concerned. In our estimation at that time, we were giving her some hard life lessons because she, she does now have three children, and there are going to be some difficulties in, in this living situation. There, there are going to be some things. So what we were doing, we are giving her some tough love and saying, hey, you cannot give up just because the chips are down or because things happen. You have to try to figure things out. Well, that would be on you. That's not on her. This is not her daughter. It's your daughter. Absolutely. And your grandchildren, sir. Absolutely. And if you want to teach her some real hard lessons and say you got to stay with the daycare, even though you're dissatisfied. We said give her a it, chance because it was the first day. So. It was the first incident, what, first day. We said give her a chance. Things happen sometimes. What I don't want to hear is from you, who seem like a very intelligent man, yes, a working man, is my daughter had no choice. Your daughter has a choice. Her choice is to say to you, Dad, please, I have to find the right daycare. I have to stop working at this job. I may need a month. You may not have liked her previous irresponsible behavior. Mm -hmm. Right? Correct. But the deed is done. She got three young children. Beautiful children. Right? So what you do is, when you have three young, beautiful children, you protect them. Absolutely. And if you're not smart enough to protect them yourself, you got to rely on your father, who's smart enough to do that. What I'm saying to you is, your daughter used this lady's services, and she has to pay for it. She may not send her children back, but your statement that you were so anxious to make to me, which is, my daughter had no choice, she did have a choice, sir. She did have a choice. Before a I would let my children stay in a place where I actually believed, believed that they were being abused, because that's what she's suggesting. I mean, she's not suggesting that this young man, who I'm not condoning hitting a three-year-old, gave him a slap on the rear end. I'm not condoning that. But there were no injuries to him. I don't know whether you've done it. I don't know whether she's done it to her child. You certainly don't want a daycare provider's child to discipline a three-year-old. Absolutely. That's, that's not what it's about. But after the first incident, what we were trying to teach her is that you don't just throw in the towel because uh, Ms. Grimm was just starting her service up. And September 5th. So we, we understand that there are going to be some, some hiccups and some, some things that she has to fix uh, as she comes across them. Mm -hmm. And so she's a young lady. My daughter's a young lady. So as an older man, I'm, I'm trying to support two individuals to build their lives up. And so I told my daughter, I don't like that she was bitten. But at least she came forward very quickly and told you, so leave them there for now. And if anything else transpires, then we can start to look at things then. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Who do you work for, sir? I work for the Veterans Administration. And how long have you worked for the Veterans Administration? 21 years. Do you get paid every two weeks? Yes, ma'am. Let's say your boss at the VA all of a sudden decided they didn't like the work you were doing. And you left and they owed you two weeks' pay because you would actually work for the two weeks. Absolutely. And you sued them for those two weeks. Mm -hmm. You worked there. You said, well, we didn't like the quality of his work for those two weeks. Well, then you fire him, but you pay him. It's like going to a restaurant. My favorite analogy is you go into your favorite restaurant where you get a steak. Mm -hmm. And you order a steak, medium, Pittsburgh medium. Steak comes, you cut into it, you take a bite, Oh, my God, you say, I don't like the way this tastes. You take the plate, you spit out the bite if you're smart, call the waiter over and say, this is a bad steak, right? Absolutely. And the waiter takes it off the bill or you order something else. Now, you cut into that same steak. You taste You say, this tastes terrible. Maybe the next bite will taste better. Before you know it, you've finished the whole steak. Waiter comes over to take your clean plate. You say, the steak was awful. I didn't like it. It was bad. Well, what'd you eat it for? But if you ate the steak, you got to pay for it. If you take a bite and say it's no good, I'm in your corner. Send it back. But your daughter ate the steak. She used her services for two weeks and didn't pay her. Well, we can't say that she used her services because there are other, other pieces of evidence she didn't, that we have. Well, you mean you're talking about that sometimes she left the children with her husband? Yeah. Yeah. Baloney, your daughter had the benefit of daycare so that she could work. If you're not satisfied with the service, you stop using the service. If you continue to use the service, despite the fact that you're not satisfied with it, you gotta pay for it. That's America. You got paid, your father got paid, she gets paid.
Shanice Grimm has accused her client, Dallas Lee, of refusing to pay for childcare services. Dallas claims Shanice wrongfully disciplined and neglected her children. Your daughter had the benefit of daycare so that she could work. Absolutely. And she had the benefit of daycare from this lady that enabled your daughter to make money. But if we're talking breach of contract, the contract was a breach when the husband watched the child. Okay. And the, the Now son. you're not teaching your daughter responsibility. Now you're making excuses. Now you're not teaching your daughter responsibility. Your daughter worked to make money. You worked those last two weeks, didn't stay home with your grandchildren. You made money. Absolutely. The only one that didn't make money and had her three children for those two weeks was the plaintiff. She ate the steak. She used the service. She didn't have anybody else. It's not as if, well, I had to hire somebody else to take care of the kids the last two weeks, even though it was in my deal. So that's why I'm not paying them. She worked, you worked, she worked. And if her husband, if she ran out to the store and left her husband, unless you're telling me that that was such a breach of the agreement that your daughter took the children out of a program. Did she? No, she did not. She didn't say, I'm not allowing your husband to take care of my children, even if it's just for an hour. I'm taking my children out of the program. Dad, can you help me out for the next couple of weeks until I find something else? But you can't eat the steak, which she did. Now you can sit down. Can I say one more thing? Not if you want to continue to look foolish. Now you're not teaching her responsibility. Well... Now you're not teaching her responsibility. I don't want to have to teach you responsibility. Well, you don't have to. I'm a veteran. I know what responsibility is. But when you are promoting... Your, your program as one thing, but your service is another. I cannot say that if Bobby Flay is cooking the steak. It doesn't matter who was cooking the steak. I it was whether you ate I the steak. It's whether you I, ate I the steak. I get what you're saying, Judge, but if it's promoted as Bobby Flay cooking it and Bob Berger cooked it and yes. I don't like the taste, then those Just are two different second. things. Oh, no, 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 sir. If you're promoting Bobby Flay as cooking the steak and you find, or the hamburger, and you find out that Bobby Flay's younger brother was mm -hmm. cooking the steak or was cooking the burger. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if the burger is no good, you're not going to eat it. But you can't eat it and say, well, I really thought I was getting a Bobby Flay hamburger and I didn't get a Bobby Flay hamburger, so I'm not going to pay for it, even though I ate it. Now you can sit down. How much is two weeks' worth of care? $600? Yes, ma'am. Judgment for the plaintiff, $600. You have a counterclaim. Counterclaim is ridiculous. Money owed for lost wages, emotional distress on behalf of the children. You shouldn't have emotional distress on behalf of the children, madam. You are their mother. The first time you had an inkling that you felt that your children, your young children, were being neglected in the plaintiff's care, what you should have done was remove them. Remove them. First time. You felt as if three-year-old shouldn't have been subject of a slap by this young man? Great. Remove them. You found that the baby, the little one, was bitten by her little one. You say, that's not watching them carefully enough, because they, I think, are supposed to be separated, correct? Yes. No, we were all in one room, so they weren't having to be separated, because with me only having less than four children, there was no way of separating, because there was only one me. It's a big responsibility to take care of little children. Correct. My daughter shouldn't have been in his reach. She did tell me I, that she I left out of the room. I absolutely agree with you. She left out of the room is what she told me, Judge. So that's actually not true. She told me that she left out of the room and went to the what, kitchen. What day? Give me the date that that happened. September 13th. You left the children there until the end of October. It couldn't have been so disturbing for you, madam, to leave the children there until the end of October, another six weeks, if you felt as if they weren't getting adequate care. And if you did, that would be on you. And maybe a little bit on your father. Because if you told him about it, he said, oh, my God, that's terrible. Take my child out right away. All three of them. But you didn't. You left them in there September 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, all the way up until the end of September and the end of October. That's on you. Actually, she did not have them in the end of September because she was suspended from her job. So they were gone for two weeks in September. Were you suspended from your job? I was. I had to... Just, just, that's my question. You were suspended from your job. When you were suspended from your job, did you take the children out of daycare? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that's reasonable. She didn't give you a problem with that, I assume. No. And you didn't pay for those two weeks? I did not. Great. Well, these two weeks you're going to pay for. Because I don't believe I owe her I, I don't care what you believe. If you're not listening to what I'm saying to you and you're fixed in your opinion, 
that means you haven't learned anything. Your father tried to teach you a little bit of tough love. What I'm telling you is, if you work, you get paid. If you're not satisfied with the service, you stop using the service. If you continue to use the service, despite the fact that you're not satisfied with it, you gotta pay for it. That's America. You got paid, your father got paid, she gets paid. She didn't get paid for the two weeks she took your kids out. Didn't say to you, well, you have to pay me anyway. I have to keep this open for you. That was very fair. Took the kids out, didn't pay. You left your kids in, you pay $600. You count the claims dismissed. We're finished. This court is adjourned. I am a little upset she didn't see things my way. The judge it was kind of in my favor for the majority of it. You know, her leaving my children in the care of her 15-year-old son and also her husband. And why does she continue bringing her children to me for another month? Also, my son letting me know that, you know, she hit him. I have never touched her children. I could take a lie detector test to prove it. It was very, pretty difficult for me because I, I didn't have any other choices. I didn't have anyone else who could help me with keeping all three of my children while I work. She actually never gave me excuses. She actually just told me she was going to pay me. Life is not easy. If you work, you should get paid. But you, you get back up and you keep moving. My generation, I'm not sure about yours, I haven't had much experience in yours, but in mine, I think we confuse having to make a hard choice with being out of options. Here, I felt for the defendant, she had to make a hard choice. But even when her father came up and felt the need to burst out and say, my daughter had no options, she had no choice. Well, she did have a choice. It was a hard choice. You had to send your two older sons to live with their father and find a sort of mediocre, at best, childcare situation. But you made the choice to have those three children. And when you have children, you make a commitment to make the hard choices to benefit them. In their best interest. In their best interest. And if you're not prepared to do that, then you shouldn't become a parent. In any event, I tried to make my steak analogy. It didn't. I thought it was great. Okay. I had a great time. Great. <laughs> I'm glad you I did. thought it was a great Sandra Duenas is suing exotic pet store owner Brian Chow for money from a snake breeding business. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case number 212, Duenas versus Cho. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Duenas, it looks to me from your papers that you decided to go into a business with someone. Yes. With whom? With the defendant, Bryant Chow. And you know him how? He's a family friend. And you know what his business is? Yes. What is his business? He currently sells uh, reticulated pythons, snakes, exotic animals, uh, monitors, lizards. And you like those things? My ex-boyfriend did. Did you? Uh, I was more for the investment part. Okay. I was so, the investor at the time. At the time, you reached out to this family friend who was in the exotic snake business. Your idea was to create a business. Uh, no, Your Honor. It was actually the defendant's idea. He... I don't care whose idea it was. Your idea was to create a business with your ex-boyfriend. I agreed to the business, but it well, wasn't our idea. Whether you agree to the business or not, you invested money yes. in the business. Yes. Which means that unless there's something wrong with you, and I see that there is not, you wanted to go into business with the defendant. Yes. So let's be easy. Okay. And at the time that you wanted to go into business with the defendant, I'll get to what the nature of that business was in a second. I know it had something to do with that wonderful-looking snake. You had a boyfriend. Yes. And the boyfriend liked snakes. Yes. And you went along with the ride. Yes. What month and year were you still with the boyfriend when you decided to go into the business, which you will explain to me? Back in November of 2019. So right before COVID. Yes. What was your boyfriend doing at the time? He was working at an airport. And he and Mr. Cho were friends? Yes. How long had you known him? Two, three weeks, Your Honor. Where did you meet him? He came into my store and acquired a... Uh, uh, I didn't ask anything. That's how you met yes. him? Yes. I'm going to get through this case and get this lovely yes. thing out of the courtroom as quickly as I possibly can. <laughs> well, some people find them exotic and gorgeous. I find them a little bit squirmy. So in November 2019, boyfriend and you decided to go into the business, explain the business that you invested in. I invested on five reticulated pythons, one male and four females. That was the original deal. And what were you going to do with them? Mr. Brian Chow was going to have it in his shop. And um, together, we were going to breed them 
and make a profit out of them. So the intention was never for you to take these pythons to your residence? No. And you understood that? No. They're buying the snake, Your Honor. Okay. How much were the five snakes? In total, it was $10,000, plus the feeding and the cages that he claimed that the snakes needed. Was it your agreement that for $10,000, Ms. Duenas and the boyfriend were going to buy one male snake and four females? They decided to buy two snakes. Well, when was that decision made, sir? A week after I met him, because okay. they... When you went into the shop, did you ultimately decide on one male, one female? No, so how it is, Your Honor, is he knew my ex-boyfriend prior to the business five years ago. He sold him a exotic Australian monitor lizard. Okay, what I want you to tell me is, did there come a time when the arrangement changed, so instead of one male and four females, you were supposed to get one male and one female? No, Your Honor. The whole way, it was supposed to be one male and four females. Do you have any sort of a receipt for that? We have Instagram conversations. Do you have that? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it. One male, four females. The guy's asking 15000 for all. And then he says, I'll drop it to twelve. Then somebody, I don't have 12 now. I just spent a lot on my monitor. Let's go the rest. OK, so he said, I don't have that money now. He says, I'm getting 16 lace monitors. You remember that yes. discussion? And then that's a big investment for me right now. I'm saving up to get a house, but I'm down to breed my monitor with any of your monitors. Keep going. So far, I don't have a contract. And then somebody says, no, you pay half and I pay half. Who wrote that? He did. No, you pay half and I pay half. Then you say 6000 I'm short 6000 I want to get them, but I'm low on cash till next month. And that's from you. That's from the reptile. Uh, I have to say it, Your Honor. OK. If I invest half with you, what will be my return? And in how long? Think about it. That will be the baby's mix price. JTK Reptiles, that's yes. you. Somebody's on their way. That's you and your boyfriend? Yes. We were on our way to give him the money. And how much money were you going to give him? We gave him the first time 6000 and then 4000 a the total of $10,000. You received that? Yes, Your Honor. And what did you purchase with the $10,000? If you look at the message from there, what she showed you is they pay half of the five snake. It means they get two of the snake, and I get two of the snake. They, they've been lying to you guys since day one. They want to purchase two snake, then I told them, like, if you look at the message, I can use my mail to breed it to your female. It's an investment for you guys, not for us. It's no us. It's not with them at all. Mr. Cho, were they supposed to take possession of the snakes? They're supposed to pick up the snake. That's why they come to the store with it. Which snakes were they supposed to take possession of? One right here and one out there. Is that a male or a female? This is the female. Has she had babies yet? No, I don't breed her because she don't belong to me. And how old is she? Right now, she should be about six years old, going seven. How long do they live? Over 30 to 40 years. Depends on how you take care of them, like I take care of them. And there's another one outside yes. the courtroom that's the same as this one, yes. also a female? Yes. And you gave them the $10,000. He acknowledges the $10,000. So we have a verbal contract that you were going to pay for some snakes. He was going to order the snakes yes. for you, which he did. And that was accomplished. And the payment for the snakes was done on what date, the first payment? Approximately in November of 2019. And when was the next $4,000 payment? The same month, I would say like a week. Good. And when did you order the snakes, Mr. Chow? Right after I get the ten the, yeah, because I cannot just acquire the animal without the payment. OK. So now you've got the payment and you order the animals. Yes. On what date do they arrive? Two days after. They're FedEx delivered to my shop. And when did you notify the plaintiff that they were there? The day that they came. I tell them the snake is So it was for. also in November, sometime yes. in November. And when did they arrive? The snake arrived? No. Oh. 
the plaintiff and the boyfriend. They arrived a week after I notified the boyfriend. Okay. Now, Ms. Duenas, a week later, you went to the shop. And what happened when you went to the shop? Now he's got $10,000, and he's got two snakes. I just want to clarify, Your Honor, that we even gave him money for the tanks, because here in the conversations, it says that he can't continue having them in tubs. So he needs us to give him money to invest, to buy the tanks, to house the snakes. So our original plan was for him to keep the snakes, because he has the shop. We, at the time, lived in an apartment. He was well aware of this, that we couldn't okay. have big snakes in our apartment. He says no, you say yes. I'm not sure how I can resolve that. I'm trying to simplify this contract. And you said you recorded all this. Yes. I'd like to see it. All right, watch out. Come back on. Cassandra Duenas claims exotic pet store owner Brian Chow owes her money for a snake breeding business. Brian says Cassandra changed her mind about the business after he purchased the snakes. Okay, part of the contract was fulfilled because you paid him. Then he ordered the snakes. Second part was fulfilled. I want you to tell me what happened when you went to, to see the snakes. You say to see them. He says to pick them up a week later. So when we went to the shop... Who what went? Led us to Who the, went? My ex-boyfriend and I. What led us to there is because after he obtained the snakes, he was not reaching out back to us. He was Just a week later. Yes. You went to the shop. Mm -hmm. He notified you that the snakes were there. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. Now, you went to the shop for what purpose? Because he switched it and then he said it was two snakes when originally the plan was one male and four females. That one male was going to breed with the four. So right out the back, he lied to us what our agreement was here that he clearly texted us and said four males and one female. So it was five snakes. So we went to and, the but shop. Yeah, but there was a problem there with pricing in the Instagram messages, a suggestion, because some of the texts were unavailable. He said originally they were $15,000. Mm -hmm. And then there was some discussion of $12,000. And then there was some discussion of $6,000. He says he'll pay half and you pay half. And there, I can imagine that there was an, some sort of an agreement for you to keep the snakes if you were going to pay half. You were always supposed to give them the snakes. It's Why would you pay half? Then they get the two of the snake and I get the two of the other snake. It's five of them. And okay. the one that we're going to pretty much, they can have it if they want it or I can use it when I need it. You mean the mail? Yes. So that was the business. Anyway, you went there and what happened? So I went in recording. My ex-boyfriend told me, hey, record. Don't tell me what your ex-boyfriend told you. Okay. Just tell me you went in and okay. what happened. We went in there and we asked him, hey, we agreed on five snakes. Now you switched up and you said now it's two snakes. First you told us it was 15,000, then 12,000. You were playing games with us the whole time. And at this point, after a week later that he said that he got the snakes, then he told us it was two snakes. At that point, we were upset because we had planned and we had counted with five snakes. That's why we gave him that ridiculous amount of money. And basically, we didn't want nothing else to do with him. We wanted our money back. And that's what we went for our okay. money back. Just a second. Yes. So you walked in wanting your money back. Yes. Do you have any text messages, Instagram messages, suggesting that before you got there, mm -hmm. you would say to him, we changed our mind, we don't want to be in business with you, we want our money back? No. Nothing? No. He Had wasn't they... reaching out, sorry, Your Honor, he wasn't reaching out to us. He was sending him video calls, he was calling him through text message, my ex-boyfriend. I he... don't care. You paid the money, he got snakes. The question is, you think there's supposed to be more than two? He says, two, more were more money. So the ultimate agreement was for two. So what happened when you went there? You're there with your boyfriend. Yes. And you and say, I want my money back. Mm -hmm. And he says... He says, I don't have the money here. I have two snakes here. Are you telling me that he didn't call you and say your snakes are in? Is that what you're suggesting? 
Do you have an invoice for these snakes, Mr. Chow? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to see the invoice for the snakes. By the way, your boyfriend has other of these um, exotic creatures. Wire Is that right? Yeah. For the people that I get them. What kind of exotic creatures does he have? One that he sold him, an Australian water monitor from the Philippines. And? He has two rhino iguanas, a pair. He has a, uh, I don't know the name, but it changes colors. Mr. Chow. Yes. This is a wire transfer, May 24th, 2018. And the date of this wire transfer is August of 2018. And those are for the lace monitor that, that dip. Are these lace monitors? Yes. Sorry, Your Honor, these are not lace monitors. These are reticulated pythons. These are not monitors. Monitors are lizards. These are snakes. Lace monitor bell face. Yes, Your Honor. Well, that's not that. No, Your Honor. Well, these are useless. Yes, but that's connected to the rest of what, I, what they did. What does that have to do with these two snakes? What the, I want to see is when you purchase these yeah, two snakes. Yeah, I don't snakes. have it, Your Honor. I'm well, sorry. get it. What I, do you mean you don't have it? I left it at home. I'm so sorry. Well, what'd you bring these for? Those are the time that they both got arrested when they went to my shop. And yeah, but break. You, you now have those back, right? Yes. You have those back. So if you had to take documents, why didn't you take the documents for the snakes in question? The lace monitor lizards aren't in question. You have them back. They may have taken them. They were arrested, and you finally got them back. So I don't understand that. I just mistake and grab the wrong paper. Well, Mr. Chow. Do you deal with these people regularly? That you buy snakes from them regularly? Not really. It depends on the size of the animal and depends what kind of animal. Well, you have the date of purchase someplace, <sighs> Mr. Chow, and I don't want you to waste my time. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That's why I just said I don't have it, Your Honor. Did they purchase that kind of snake? Yes, Your Honor. Is that correct? It was five snakes, Your Honor. Uh, don't give me five. That type of snake. Oh, yes, the reticulated python, yes. And the one that's outside is the same, correct? Yes. And you did not purchase baby snakes. No. You wanted full-grown snakes because they were a business. You wanted them able to be... Breed. Breeding. Okay. Should have brought the paperwork. And you went in there that day in November because you had changed your mind. Yes, and on top... Yes. Just to see, because you had changed your mind. Yes. That's the answer. You had changed your mind. You can give me a whole bunch of excuses, and you told him you changed your mind, you want your money back. And he said, no, because I ordered the snakes, and I got them in, and they're yours. Contract is completed. I'm merely holding your property. And then there was a kerfuffle. And tell me about the kerfuffle. The issue was that it was going back to what I was saying is, then we asked him as well, can we have, like, receipt? How much did you really pay for them? He no, no, that's not your business. That's not your business, how much you really paid for them. He made a deal. You paid him. If he got them for $2,000 and you paid him ten, that's nothing. The kerfuffle, let's draw this down to its most simple English. Mm -hmm. You wanted your money back and you wanted to cancel this contract. Yes, it's just when we arrived, those weren't the snakes that we ordered. These were the breed of it, is the ones that he was putting here on Instagram, which I have, which is not those. So we ordered something and we got something else. So, just, so is what you're telling me, you went there to pick up your because now it's changed. You yeah. went there to pick up your snakes. Mm -hmm. When you got there, they turned out to be a different... It's a breed. It's like the... Pythons, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. They're pythons, but it was a different kind of python. Mm -hmm. Now you're telling me because it was a different python, you wanted your money back. Yes, because it's what it wasn't what we paid for. It's like we paid for a Ferrari and we got a Toyota, <laughs> basically. It's basically what... You, we... you know nothing about pythons, so... You're taking your cues from your boyfriend, because that's his strong suit. Is it yours as well? No, I'm just the investor. Right. So your boyfriend had a conversation with him and said, those aren't the snakes that I ordered. Yes. Okay. And I want my money back. Yes. And you said you recorded all this. Yes. I'd like to see it. And when he broke the glass, where did he take them? He put it in a bin. And is that you carrying them out? Yes, and that's the reason this, why I was this. charged with the robbery, just because I walked out with the item. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's a co-conspirator.
Cassandra Duenas is accusing exotic pet store owner Brian Chow of wrongfully keeping money for a snake breeding business. Brian says he fulfilled their agreement and claims Cassandra stole property from his store. And you said you recorded all this? Yes. I'd like to see it. Okay. You just press play. Which one? Which one? Oh, right here. And then you press that. This one? Yes. Oh. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. You guys just want to do the money back. Yeah. Um, the 10180 in total, and then um, money on top of that for lending you the money and everything. I didn't see that coming. Uh, yeah, because we didn't see this coming. You, you just kept on giving us a turnaround and around. Oh, no, what? About the mail. Remember that No, that's why I'm waiting for the mail to be delivered. I don't have the mail. Yeah, but remember you had told us that the guy had it because he had to leave yeah, and he had to cut out because he has surgery and all that stuff. Yeah. We gave you the money right there and then. You don't understand what mission we had to go I don't know. I don't mind getting you guys your money back, but I don't have cash right now. You guys caught me by surprise. Oh, yeah. yeah, but we're going to have to do it today, though. Like, we, we need our money today. If you want it right now, right now, I don't have it. We told you we want to do a business correct, and you just keep on giving us another day and another day. You told us as soon said, as we give you the money, the snake was going to be here. Yeah, it's not yeah. about me. It's the guy. It's not me. I'm just buying the snake from a different guy. And then another thing where you messed up, you said five snakes for 6000 and you come at me with four, and you wasted my money. Yeah, and I told you that he gave me only four snakes, the big giant. Yeah, and why would you waste money if I told you to get the five snakes? If you worry about the last one, I can pay for it. It's a meal that we don't need. But I have to do all this, so I have to get like this for you to do that? No, bro. How can I trust you now? Bro, the four snake is right okay, here. You, I don't know no, I, 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 don't I'm going to go get something. What's wrong with you, bro? I'm just asking you. No, no, let's, let, no let's, let's talk. No, no, we're not going to talk. I told you don't with me. I don't talk with you, bro. Dog. Why? Because What's that's wrong? Money. Because we gave you a lot of money. Uh, we're talking about over ten thousand dollars, and you're just giving us the runaround. First, I, you told us this five is what snakes. We do. I'll take. It. And when you get the money, I'll give it back. Yeah, female too. Oh no. Oh no. All right. Well, come on, bro. It's, you're looking I, at a fifteen grand. I told you, don't play with me. <laughs> I don't play with All right. you. Don't you don't even have the money right open now. Open them up, man. I got the hot. Open them up. Open them up. I'm trying to talk to you, bro. No, there's no more talking because we gave you the money. Right here and then. That's unprofessional. You're trying to scam us, yeah. and you don't do open that to people like I that. I didn't. How did I scam they you? You're telling me that you don't have the money. I have half of the money because I'm waiting for the snake. Bro, if you guys get to get arrested. There's no arrest. We're just getting what you took from us. Over $10,000. I was trying to talk to you. Are you going to open it? I tried to, I told bro, you, no, we tried to talk money. to you, and you're telling us you're money. gonna have the money. I have everything in video. I, I don't okay? care. I, you can right. record me, bro. Right, so you don't it? play with people's money. You can call you whoever me whatever you want. Fifteen thousand dollars. This is fifteen grand. I don't, I don't we don't care. Can you call a <laughs> cop, please? <laughs> no, no, no. All right, watch out. Come back with I told you, don't play with my money. What are you doing? What do you mean? He owes me money. Get out! 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 Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. He owes us money. He owes us money. They're going to deal with it. Now I'll play that video, please. That's your boyfriend breaking into the... Yes. Yes. And when he broke the glass and took out whatever lizards he took out with him, where did he take them? You were still with him. Yes, he put it in a bin. And is that you carrying them out? Yes, and that's the reason just, why I just, was charged with the robbery, just because I walked out with the item. That's all right. That's fine. <laughs> that's a co-conspirator. Ultimately, the lizards that you took were returned to you. Yes, Your Honor. And it seems, Mr. Chow, at the beginning of this case, I must acknowledge to you that I was sympathetic to your position, that they had ordered snakes. You ordered them. You mm -hmm. got them. Yes, Your Honor. And then the contract is completed. Uncross your arms. No, I'm so sorry. But it's clear from the tape 
that the plaintiff played for me, that you acknowledged that you did not fulfill your end of the contract, that you were blaming your inability to fulfill your end of the contract on some third party. Is that what I heard in the tape? I mean, you know, my hearing's not really acute, but that's what you said. I have no control. I can give you back half your money, but I can't give you back all of your money. So the contract was not complete. It was complete because they supposed to get only two snakes. I didn't see anywhere where it says just two snakes. There was a whole bunch of conversation there about the male snake, and you were supposed to deliver to them the male snake. And you said, I don't have that money now, but I can get that money for you. I can give you the first money. I don't have the second money. It was clear that the contract was not complete unless you have something to show me that it was. But what I heard, it was not. That doesn't mean that Ms. Duenas has the right to break your property and to steal property that belongs to you. What they do is they come into a court and say, you have my money. The contract was not fulfilled. I want my money back. That's what you do. Are you in the business of breeding snakes for your store? Yes, Your Honor. And if we were to go on the internet now... Yes, Your Honor. How much would one of those snakes, which is six or seven years old, according to you, sell for? Right now, this size, you're looking at it about six to 7,000 each one. But if you troll the internet of people who actually like those creatures in their house, for whatever reason, if you put up that snake on the internet for sale, how fast would it take you to sell it? I still say like about a month, a month and a half. They're rare. Yes. Is that right? That's what you're saying. It's rare and is just not a lot of people will acquire that much money. Even though they can sell the babies. And how many babies do they have? In a year, they can do from 30 to 50. And each one of the 30 to 50, you can sell for $3,500. Yes. I suggest you do that. She gets her $10,000 back. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000. We're finished. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I'm very happy, and I'm happy that she was able to see herself that um, the defendant got caught in multiple lies. They're just a customer. He wasn't truthful since the beginning. Um, ever since we invested. They bought a snake. I would want to give their, their snake, but they don't want to take it. And it's very sad how nowadays you can't trust in anybody. I think one great lesson that a lot of people can take away from that is you have to know the business that you're investing in. I can appreciate she was sort of doing it for her boyfriend and he had the knowledge about the exotic animals, but that's her money at the end of the day. And if you're going to put your own hard-earned money on the line, it should be a business that you at least put in the time to learn about. To understand. Exactly. So that you don't have to rely on somebody else to make the right decisions. Who's going to be gone tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And your money Who potentially is could, and then you're left on your own having to sue and navigate a field that you really know nothing about. Smart. And it was also an example of a contract that was not fully executed. Mm -hmm. I actually thought when I started the case that there was an offer, mm -hmm. an acceptance. You perform, paid the money, got the snakes, yeah. and then you can't change your mind. Yeah. Once you get it, you say, well, I changed my mind. But that's not what happened. No. Nope. And her video demonstrated that that's not what happened because Mr. Chow started to waft. Well, it's not my fault I don't have your mail. It's another guy, and I would give it to you, but I can't give it to you as soon as I get it, you know. Yeah. So he did not deliver on the contract. So I had very little compulsion other than to say... You don't have to take the snake <laughs> and you get your money back. Yeah. Anyway, done. Yeah. And the snake is gone. <laughs> Let Nishera Garrett is suing her former friend, Michael Codia, and his girlfriend, Brianna Serrano, for a personal loan, car damages, and an assault. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2056, Garrett versus Cody scenario. Thank you. Ms. Garrett, this gentleman, Michael Codia, is that? Correct. Cody? Yes. You and Mr. Codia have been lifelong friends, according yes. to what I read in the complaint. Lifelong, you're both very young. How do you know him? Well, we used to ride bikes together. His mom used to also braid my hair when I was a child, every Sunday. But you and Mr. Codia, were never involved in any relationship other than just friendship? No. And, Mr. Cody, Miss Serrano is currently your girlfriend. Correct. Yes, yeah. She had been your girlfriend and been living with you for a while, and you have a child together. Yes, correct. Well, she's currently pregnant. We're expecting, we're, hmm? we're expecting yeah. We're expecting. Great. 
<laughs> you had a fight yes. with Ms. Serrano, and that was around June of this year? Yes, Your Honor. And it was a substantial enough fight that Ms. Serrano left the home, and she left the home with your child. And how old is your child? As I was saying, we, we are expecting. So you don't have a child no. together? She's six months pregnant, though, currently. Okay. So you're just living, and she left? Correct. At about the same time, Miss Garrett, your friend, needed a place to stay. I wouldn't say needed a place to stay, but... What would you say? It was more like, um... I, I kind of had a clue, like, she had a place to stay, but it was just one of those situations. No, no, look over here. Look over here. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Now, Mr. Cody, I want you to understand there are very few stories that are new under the sun. I want you to really understand that. I have children. I have grown grandchildren boys and girls. I've seen all the movies that I want to see about romance and guys. So your girlfriend leaves you. Yes. Yes. And would it be fair to say that you invite Miss Garrett to come and stay with you? Yes, it would be fair. Had you ever invited her to come and stay with you before? No, I have not. Not in the current apartment that I'm staying in right now, no. Had you in another apartment? No. So the answer is you had never invited your friend to come and stay with you before? No. Interesting. So on June 27th, she left. On what date did you invite Miss Garrett to come and stay in your apartment? June 16th. June 16th? Yes. So 11 days before Miss Serrano left? Miss Serrano left about a week prior to her coming. What date did you leave, Ms. Serrano? Do you recall? I don't recall. I recall it was the end of or mid-June of this year, I would say. I had personal things going on, so I really wasn't, you know. <laughs> now, Ms. Serrano, I'm going to ask you why you left. Um, we had a falling out. Me and Michael had a falling out. Yes. What did you and Michael have a falling out about? Well, at the time, my mother was in the hospital, so that it was a disagreement surrounding having to move back home and take care of her in the household. And? And that was pretty much it. Well, what did he say? He said he didn't want you to, and you... Yeah, he pretty much, long story short, didn't want me to move back to my mother's house, so that caused, you know... Okay, so he wanted you to stay? Yes. Yes, he wanted me to stay, but, you know... He wanted you to stay. Now, did you know that the two of you were expecting at that time in June? Yes. Yes. So he knew that you were expecting a baby, that you wanted to go back to your mother's house because she was ill and you wanted to help take care of her. Is that correct? Correct, yes. And despite the fact that he said, don't go... You left. Yes, ma'am. And you went home. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it would be fair to say that he was annoyed. I, if you Just... want, yes. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm getting this whole picture now. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> okay. And about a week later, he invites this attractive young lady who's been a friend of his for a long time, a non romantic friend, to move into the apartment. Yes. You know that that was nasty, right? Oh, no, I'm... I, yes, I know. You know that that, that was nasty. That was an agreement between them. No, no, no. Them, you know. But you know that that was a sort of a nasty thing oh, to no, do. Oh, no, I'm fully aware. Yes, oh, okay. yes ma'am. Yes. I, yes. I just want you to know what you're you. sort of dealing with. Yes, I'm, you know? I'm fully aware of what I'm dealing oh, with. <laughs> thank okay. you, though. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, so, Mr. Cody, I wanted to sort of get even a little bit. You invite Miss Garrett to come and move in, no rent or anything, because you didn't have an agreement to pay rent. You weren't going to pay rent or anything, and you moved in. And you moved in on... I moved in on the 1st. On the 1st of? July. July 1st. Now, Miss Serrano, yes. I'm going to come back to you, because this is such a fascinating story. Oh, <laughs> such a fascinating story. And he deserves to get dumped on a little bit. Oh, there's you know... more where that came from, yeah. Hmm? I said, that's more where that came from, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And between the time you left yes. and July 1st, yes. when Miss Garrett was invited to come to stay at the yes. house, were you in communication with Mr. Codia? Yes. I would say, like, every day or every other day, we spoke, you know, okay. arguments, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the well, you know, first of all, you're pregnant and you yes. have emotions and then you're taking care of family members and whatever, and so... I got it. Did he tell you that Miss Garrett was moving in? Um, yes. When? I would say I found out around, like, the 27th, 28th. Of June? Yes. Tell me how you found out that she was moving in. I believe at that point she was already moved in at that point. Okay. And what made you think that? 
just based off of how the conversation went of, of, or how he told me. Tell me what he told you. What I was told was that a friend was moving in to solely cook and clean. You see what's happening to him? This fly is getting vengeance on him. That's getting on me. What the hell's going on? Oh, you got a swapper too. Wow. I'm waiting for it You're to come over here. Yes. <laughs> Nishira Garrett claims her former friend Michael Codia and his girlfriend Brianna Serrano owe for a personal loan and an assault. Tell me what he told you. I'm um, curious. Well, I want to know. Was told, what I was told was that a friend was moving in to solely cook and clean. That's what I was told. Okay, did he tell you who? Who it was. I never met her. But he told you who it was? Yes, he told me who it was. And that made you, I would probably guess, a little annoyed and unhappy. I mean, it, I was annoyed. I, I, I would be annoyed. I mean, I was annoyed because I had personal things going on, but in between that time before actually realizing that she was living at my apartment, I actually had a brief interaction with her. I met her at a park. I met her, so... Between the time you moved out? Yes. Okay. Was it you met because you contacted each other or no, you met, we met by accident? Me and, we met because me and Michael just, you know, had a conversation to have had at that point in time. I'm assuming she was there in the area, so he just wanted to kill two birds with one stone. He said, do you want to meet the person, you know, who, who's there, who I'm living with, and that's how it went. And was it a cordial meeting? Yes, it was. You met her, she met you? Yes. And he said, I just want you to meet... The lovely looking girl that I'm now living with because you went home to take so. care of your mother. I guess so, if you wouldn't put it. Yes, he. Don't uh, feel. <laughs> 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 yeah. This is what your case is about. First, you claim that you loaned Mr. Codia $750 for rent. Yes. And you did that because he said once Miss Serrano moved out, she wasn't paying her rent, he was short on rent. That's what I read here. Mr. Cody has a whole different story. He said while he told you that he was a little short on rent and he was going to have to get a third job. That's not true. Just a second. You jumped in and offered to give him $750. That's what you wrote here. Is that right? Correct. Now, Mr. Cody, did you tell Ms. Serrano that somebody was moving into the apartment just to cook and clean? That's what she says. Yes, that's exactly my words. Exactly my that's, words, yeah. That's exactly what you yeah. told her. Correct. You didn't tell Miss Serrano, the soon-to-be mother of your child, that you had a roommate who was paying rent. I did not. Miss Serrano, what kind of work were you doing when you were living together in June? I had a work-from-home position, will still currently do as a Medicaid specialist. Were you sharing rent with him? Yes. Everything was 50-50. Did you pay him any rent in July? No, I did, did not. Did you pay him rent in June? Yes. So you paid him the $750. That was your share of the rent? Is that yes. what your share yes. was? that was my share of the rent. June was already paid for. July, I did not pay because I did not believe I was going to be there. Okay. Tell me what he said to you that caused you to give him the $750. Well, he texted me one morning and said that Brianna was no longer going to pay her half of the rent as of July, and that if he can... You were living there already? Yes. And if I give him 750 he would give it back to me. And we never discussed anything about me cooking or cleaning. I actually brought groceries, which he said that he would pay me back for, too, while I'm staying there. Okay. So, so you were actually exchange. there for five days, is that right? About five days. Five, six days. And at some point around the first week in July, July 5th, 6th, or 7th, you came to the apartment. Yes. Tell me what happened. We had went inside the apartment. Who's we? Michael and I, sorry. Michael so and you I were at, So you weren't staying there. Where had you met him? We actually met at work. We've been together, well, we've been together for a year no, and a half. No, I understand that. Yeah. But you came home to the apartment together, and that was, I think, on the 7th of July. Yes. On the 7th yeah. of July. Where had you been? You'd been out, you hadn't been staying in the apartment. Oh, no, yeah, I was out actually just going to rosaries and stuff like that. I actually went to go pick him up after a family function from work. After picking him up from work, we went back to the apartment, went upstairs. Was that the first time you had been back to the apartment? No. I've, since you left? Since I left, I've been there on and off. Like, not on and off, but like every other couple days. But I've been there, not living there, but I've been there spending the night and, you know... Have you ever... When you were there, have you seen Miss Garrett? 
Nope, but I seen her belongings, though. Okay. But you knew she was there, because yeah. he told you that she was there. Exactly. So yeah. on yeah. the 7th, you picked him up, you went back to the apartment, and yeah. you've been there before, but you had never actually physically seen her in the apartment. Correct. Despite the fact that you knew she was there. Correct. Because you'd been introduced to her. Correct. Okay. And what happened? So we went upstairs. She seen that I was with him, and I guess that must have made her mad. No, just tell me what happened. So there was an argument. Tell me what the argument was. I don't, even, what? I don't even know what the argument was, honestly. Did... She's just seen me, and then there was an argument that unfolded about what I still don't know still to this day. Okay. <laughs> so now, Miss Garrett, they came home, and... Okay, so them two never came in the apartment together at all that night and previously. No, just tell me that night. Oh, oh that night. So me and Michael discussed that, hey, listen, things are not working out. He has had multiple people in and out his house, and he was making me very uncomfortable, as well as Miss Serrano popping up. So, so what do you say? You said multiple people in the, the house. Guys, women every night. Mm -hmm. I would sleep in the park. One night I slept in the park because he had Miss Serrano popping up at 3 o'clock in the morning, her throwing my things around, telling me to get out the house. So I had to go in my car and go sleep in the park. And we had conversations that night when it happened, when she popped up. Hey, can I go sleep? What date was that? It was, I want to say, July the 2nd or the 3rd. Okay. Yeah. Before the 7th. Right. Okay. And that's when you went out and slept in the park? Yes. Just a second. Mr. Cody, you remember that evening? Yes, I do. Okay. And that evening on July 2nd or 3rd, Ms. Serrano was around. And they don't get along. They do not. Which is exactly what you anticipated. Of course. When you invited her to stay with you. Sadly. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Gonna have two women fight over the prize. Uh, the grand right. prize. <laughs> okay. Did you take $750 from her? No, I did, did you? Not. Did you? I didn't ask you a loan. Yes, I did. didn't ask you. She has proof that she gave it to you. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So let's not play. Did you take seven hundred and fifty dollars from yes, her? I did. So it goes back to her. That's seven hundred and fifty dollars. Now we're going to get to what she alleges is the remainder of her lawsuit, which is damages for assault. Okay. On the seventh of July, there was some sort of an altercation. You want to tell me what that was? Yes. You did something that annoyed him. You went back to take care of your sick mother, which also attests to his bad character. And then what he does is he invites someone, a woman, to come into the house because he knows that it's going to irritate you. That's exactly what happened. He acknowledges that. Nashira Garrett has accused her former friend, Michael Cotia, and his girlfriend, Brianna Serrano, of damaging her car and assaulting her. Now, on the 7th of July, there was some sort of an altercation. You want to tell me what that was? Yes. So, um, that evening, I went into the house, and he had his witness, Darius, there. And th this person? Yes. And me and Michael had conversations about him before, and I just thought it wasn't a good influence. So that evening, I walk in the house, and I had... I'm sorry, let me back that up. I asked Michael if he's going to have men come in the house, could he please be there while I'm there with them? Because I didn't feel comfortable. He said yes. So when I walked in that evening and saw Darius there, I texted Michael and said, Michael, we need to have another talk. Because every talk we have, I'm thinking that you, we're having understandings, but we're not. So, and Darius set up a whole twin-sized bed up in the living room. <laughs> in the living room. So I went out to my car. I said, Michael, when you get home, I'm in my car. So meet me in my car when you get off. It was around 8.30 when Michael had came, and I was sitting in my car. Me and Michael were talking, and... Was he in your car with no, you? No, no, no. He was outside of, of my driver's side. So that's when Miss Brianna came, and she started hitting him upside his head, and I tried to get out of the spot that I was in. And next thing I know, my window's down, and she comes and she's attacking me, punching me in my face. She keyed up my car. When she first came up to my window, she keyed my car. Yeah, I have... I can show you. What? Okay, did you file a police report? I didn't. Why? I just didn't. I took care of my bruises and my scar. I just... I did call 911, but then I hung up. 
I just, <laughs> I just didn't. And I. Okay. Do you have photographs of your injury? Do you have yes. So what you're telling me is that this was a scratch yes. across your chest. Mm -hmm. And that's a scratch that was caused by Miss Serrano. Yes. And that was in July. Yes. Miss Serrano, I'd like to hear your version of what happened on the 7th of July. Like I said before, there was just an argument that okay. took place. That was an, I, want you to start, I want you to start the argument the from the beginning. OK. OK. She's outside in her car. Mm -hmm. Michael is talking to her. At the car. Oh, yeah. Did you drive over there or did you walk? How did you get I there? I parked my car like in front of the house because they were on the side street. So I walked. She walked there. Exactly. You parked yes, the I car. Walked. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions, Miss Serrano. Yeah. Did Mr. Codia ever give you an indication that Miss Garrett was no longer going to be living there? Not that I could recall, no. Well, I, I mean, want I you to try to after, recall. I was told after that whole they went the day after that the conversation was going to be for her to leave the house. OK. And what were you coming over for? What brought you over there at 8 o'clock at night? For him. It what do you wasn't... mean, for him? Well, he left something in my car. He left a charger or something. It was something he left in my car that I was returning back to. Did you tell him you were coming over? Nope. nope. I just popped up. <laughs> the answer is no. No. You were curious. Yes, I was. Of course I was. There you were. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. See what's happening, Tim? This fly, fly is getting it's vengeance crazy. on it. That's getting on me, too. What the hell is going on? Oh, you got a swapper, too. Wow. I'm waiting for it You're to waiting. come over here. <laughs> did you seek medical treatment? I did not. Mr. Cody, I'm going to wrap up this case because I really understand it. I believe I understand it. What I don't understand is why, and this doesn't require an answer, it's sort of a rhetorical question. Why you would want to take someone who had been a lifelong friend and someone with whom you were having a child and put either one or both of them in a situation so they don't know each other, really, so they don't know whether to like each other or whether not to like each other. I mean, I assume that at this point you would... At least Miss Serrano was planning a long-term relationship with you and she's having a child, and I assume she thinks you're going to be there to be supportive of the child. Maybe. You have other Great. children? Yes, I do. How many children do you have? I have uh, another son. Okay, how old? Five years old, five. And he lives with his mother? Yes, he does. So you see... Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a pesky one. I'm usually good at it. I missed it before. I don't know why you would put them in a situation where they would dislike each other all to satisfy your ego. Wow. Oh, that's, well, that's exactly what you did. You put them in a position where two apparently nice ladies, both of whom care about you in different ways, you put them... Well, do you care about him? Yes. You think she cares about him? She, I've never, the entire time I was with They just know each other for a long time. So it was way care. before me, so I guess if you would have put it like that. And they also went to just senior a second, prom together. Just a second. Wow, I, think I didn't ask together. you... I'm sorry, Your Honor. I didn't ask you anything. This is not a shout-out. What I'm telling you is, gotcha. it goes to his character. He knows her for a long time. They never had a romantic relationship. With you, he's had a romantic relationship. You did something that annoyed him. You went back to take care of your sick mother, which also attests to his bad character. And then what he does is he invites a woman to come into the house, lets you know about it, because he knows that it's going to irritate you. That's exactly what happened. He acknowledges that. That doesn't make him a good guy. So I want you to think about that. But I absolutely believe that you caused a scratch on her, which you can't do. Anyway, Mr. Cody, you owe her $750. And Ms. Serrano, you can't put your hands on anybody, no matter how angry you are at them. And I'm awarding her $1,000 for you putting your hands on her. Okay. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're done. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I was very satisfied. I mean, I knew it would cause havoc, but... Uh, Different women every night. I try to keep it in secret. And that's why we stopped being friends before, but... I definitely learned my lesson. I feel like it's unfortunate. I feel like she manipulated the whole situation. The friendship is over. It's going to be a father to my child, man. 
After working with you now for almost a year, I'm starting to get so jaded from these cases that I'm starting to think that just staying single might be my best option right. if these are the alternatives. Yeah. Just blows my mind. He admitted to just pitting an old friend and your fiance, who's pregnant with your child, against each other. To sounds satisfy like, your ego. Yes, sounds like a terrible idea, was a terrible idea, turned out to be a terrible idea, and it'll land you in court on occasion. You're right, but rethink that staying single. Free Marshall are suing their neighbors, Joseph and Jennifer Fugate, for an insurance deductible and filing a false police report. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case number 2074, Marshall versus Fugate. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. and Mrs. Marshall, you live across the street from Mr. Fugate and his mother. Yes. How long have you lived in your house? 22 years. And Mr. Fugate, how long have you lived in your house? Your Honor, my mom has lived in the house far longer than I have. She's lived in it since 2008. I moved in in 2016. Mr. and Mrs. Marshall, this problem that I'm going to try to rectify today deals with parking space. Yes. And the parking space is a public parking space, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And it's on the street, and the public parking space happens to be in front of your home. Yes, ma'am. You live across the street. Yes, ma'am. And the case involves acrimony that has developed because you, Mr. Fugate, would like to keep that spot that's in front of your home free for your mother, who you say, for health reasons, it would be more convenient for her to park right in front of the house. Yes, ma'am. And Mr. and Mrs. Marshall sometimes, or always, park in that spot. That's what the problem is. Yes. yes. OK. And I assume you're going to speak for your husband for now? I can, yes. Do you want her to talk for you? Sorry. <laughs> he Are you learned his lesson for his well. Husband? Oh, that's very good. <laughs> you Perfect. Can speak, I can speak for myself. Perfect. If she need to, she can. Perfect. You've been living there a long time. Did you have any trouble with the Fugate family about this parking space between 2008 and 2016? No. So before the son moved in, you Correct. had no problem. That's right. That's had you ever... Honor. Just a second. Had you ever had discussions with Mrs. Fugate about parking in that spot before he came? No, ma'am. OK. Now, Mrs. Fugate, did you understand what I said? Yes, ma'am. OK. I want you to be very careful in your answer to me. Yes, ma'am. You've lived there for a long time. Yes, your son didn't move in until 2016. Before your son moved in, did you ever have any communication with Mr. and Mrs. Marshall about parking in front of your house? Ma'am. She didn't park in front of my house before my son moved in. OK. So is that correct? That's correct. OK. Can you tell me what changed after her son moved in? OK. Where I park at is actually across the street from the few gates. It's right by my driveway. And I park my Toyota Avalon right beside my driveway which is the parking spot that Mr. Fugate is causing the problems over. So it's the parking spot is in front of your house? No, it's not in front of my house. It's beside my driveway. But on your side of the house? That's on your correct. side of the street? Oh, yes. Correct. Yeah. Do they have a parking space in front of their house on their side of the street? Yes, ma'am. Do you ever park there? I have when they took the parking space I usually park in, I did park across the street. OK. So occasionally, either Mr. Fugate, his mother, parks on your side of the street, on a public street, and you'll park in front of their house. Correct. OK. I got it. OK. So let me tell you all this. We're going to finish part of the case right now. Too bad. You can park where ever you want on a public street. Because there are other visitors that come, I assume, for people who live on the block, that they take up parking spaces, and occasionally there aren't other parking spaces. You know, there's no question you would prefer to park on your side of the street, and you would prefer to park on your side of the street. If you can't, you can't. Mr. Fugate, I'm just telling you, just so that you know, mm -hmm. you have no right to a public parking space. 
Yes, I understand that, Your Honor. I'm not the one that needs to be told that, though. You have no right to a public parking space. Yes, ma'am. Where do you live in what state? Ohio, Cincinnati. Okay. I've actually been to Cincinnati oh. frequently. But I am certain that there is no regulation in Ohio or any city or town thereof that says, well, you sort of had first dibs on the parking space on the public street that's in front of your house. That's ridiculous. The best that Cincinnati has, Your Honor, is a three-day law that if the vehicle doesn't move within three days, then it could be towed by the city. But that's the best that they have. You live across the street from each other. Did either of you ever call the police and say a car has been there for more than three days? Yes, Your Honor. Who did? I did, Your Honor. Why? Because the, the spot in question that's directly across the street is actually, it's hindering to the entire flow of the neighborhood and where everybody parks on the street. I served 10 years Army, and um, I fight for, I fought for people. I don't, listen, I don't care if you're a good person, if you're not a good person, if you're a do-gooder, if you're not a do-gooder, it's a public street. And if what you're suggesting to me is they should be nice, these, it's an older person and they shouldn't park in that spot, and what, what I'm telling you is, I wouldn't start up with anybody by calling the police on a car that I, especially a car that I knew. I know that it's my neighbor's car. They've been living there for 22 years, relatively peacefully. <laughs> relatively peacefully. It hasn't really been peaceful, Your Honor. You moved there. Yes, I did. They were living there a decade before you moved there. You. Yes, ma'am. If it wasn't peaceful, there are options. You're a free person. But I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I cannot imagine my calling the police on a neighbor's car that was parked in the street. Well, that created problems. OK, so I see where we're going. We're going to get to this case. Reimbursement for insurance deductible, that's one thing. Because you claim that Mr. Fugate yes, damaged your car. Yes, ma'am. On what date? That was on June the 26th. Of this year? Of 21, I'm sorry. OK, do you have any video evidence of the damage to your car? No, ma'am, all I okay. have is a picture. Tell me how he damaged the car. With what did he damage the car? OK, he damaged the car with his hand. I'm parking the car. You mean in front of? In front of uh, Mrs. Fugate's home. Cool. So on her side of the street? Yes, ma'am. I exit the car. Mr. Fugate is, is being a radical. No, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me what your perception of... Tell me what he did. He was beating the hood out of the car. He came up to the car and was hitting the top of the yes, car? Yes, ma'am. OK. Now I'll see the car and the police report. See the dent? And that's the hood of the car. OK. OK, as this police report says, Mr. Fugate told the police in his narrative that this incident occurred, there was a disagreement over the parking space, and that you struck him with the car, causing minor injury. OK, because you have a cross complaint for that. That is correct. OK. So that's a simple. June 26th, I see the car was damaged. There's no question it was damaged by somebody pounding on the hood. And I assume that was you. Ma'am, that's wrong. I did not pound on the hood. Well, then tell me, Mr. Fugate, how these dents occurred, just the way they look, on the hood of the car. Your Honor, there is a... I have the 911 audio calls of the night, as well as the police report. And I also drew up a diagram where she was originally parked that explains everything. But... OK, so I'd like to see that. Um, OK. Ma'am, if I could approach the diagram. Absolutely. June 20... Sixth. On June 26, I was talking to my parents when the marshals came home. My car was parked right here, OK? They came home, they blocked their own driveway, and parked right up on top of my bumper. Just a second. I... Just a second. So you, Mr. Fugate, were parked on a public street where you could park on their side of the street, not your side of the street, OK? Yes, sir. And they came up blocking their own driveway. Yes, Your Honor. OK. Did you see them? Were you in the house watching? No, I was on my parents' porch. 
Okay, so now you're on your parents' porch, they're in their car, and they block their own driveway. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Not a big so, ordeal, right? Not any of your business. Right, it wasn't, like I said, wasn't a problem wasn't to any, me, wasn't... Wasn't any of your right. business. Exactly. So Go anyway, ahead. I'm talking to my parents on the phone. They're just getting done um, working. I can hear that the marshals are upset about where I'm parked at on a public street. And I went out to save my parents' spot because I could hear her say, I'm gonna teach him a lesson. So, Mr. Fugate, now, is what you're telling me that that car where you're standing, you went out to make it so that they could not park on a public street. Is that what you're telling me? The, the answer is yes. Yes, yes. You got off the porch to stand in the street to block them from moving in front of your house because your car was parked on their side of the street. No, just, just, no Your Honor. No, you got that is, wrong. Just, is that red car yours? The red car is mine, is mine. Yes, Your Honor. Just to say, the red car is yours. Listen, I'm not a moron. I know that. The white car, the white car is the space that you wanted to save for your parents. Yes, Your Honor. They were on their way home. Who I was talking to them. Who gives a rat's behind where they were? Now you have this both This whole parked. area was clear, and there is a crossing road that comes all the way through here, and they could have parked. Who made you the monitor of public parking? No one. Who do you think you are to be the monitor of public parking? Jerry and Jeffrey Marshall claim their neighbors, Joseph and Jennifer Fugate, owe for an insurance deductible and filing a false police report. Joseph and Jennifer are countersuing for medical bills from an assault. Now, you went out on a public street to go like this to save a parking space for your parents. Yes, sir. That you had no right to do. Let me just understand this. You had no right to go out there. You parked on their side of the street, and then you went outside to save the spot because your parents were on their way home. Yeah, not Just a second. You have no right to do that. Zero. Don't, don't you understand that? No, actually, I don't understand that, Your Honor. How do I not have a right to save a spot? You do not have a right to save a public... Parents. Just a second. You don't have that right because I'm here to tell you, you don't have a right to save a spot on a public street by standing in the street like this. Don't park here. And I'm you have like this. I don't care. I don't care whether you were hopping on one foot and chewing gum. You don't have the right to save a spot, and it makes it twice as obnoxious because you parked on their side of the street. Now, if there was a spot in front of their house that they could park in, and they said, "No, I'm going to park in front of the defendant's house," I could say, "You know what?" That nasty. Well, that's, that's just that thing, nasty. Now you have this both spots. This whole area was clear, okay? And there is a crossing road that comes all the way through here, and they could have parked. Who made you the the monitor of public parking? No one. Who do you think you are to be the monitor of public parking? Get back. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Okay, so now, Mr. Monitor of Public Parking, you come out and you're standing in the street to save the spot. She comes around to park there, right? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me what happened. Well, um, she came around to park there and then she hit me with her car. Just a second. She came around to park there and you were standing in the street. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, pay careful attention. Where did she hit you in the car before you moved? She hit me in the knee. Your in the knee. And so you jumped out of the way. No, no. I fell on her car. I guess I was talking on the phone, and when she hit me in the knee, I fell on her car. Baloney! I... That's not what this is. What was the damage to your car? The damage. That's baloney. That didn't happen because you your elbow went on her car, sir. If she hit you on the knee, she hit you on the knee with the front of her car, which is possible. By the way, you have medical records to show me? I do. I'd like to see them. The record should reflect that they closed this case, made no arrests in this case, and to probably told everybody to behave themselves, which is what I'm doing. I apologize. Okay. What is this? That is the ambulance bill for... I want to see a medical record. I don't care if you went in an ambulance. I want to see what the doctor reported about your injury. Where is that? I was unable to get that. Well, that's too bad. Then I'm not interested in this. That's nonsense. 
Okay, how much did it cost to fix your car? Here we are. Thank you. And you had a $500 deductible? Yes, ma'am. $500 so far for the plaintiff. The counterclaim that talks about medical bills for this is dismissed. Okay, filing a false police report. Yes, ma'am. And the false police report you're talking about is what? Mrs. Fugate initiated a confrontation with me. Which, when? December the 22nd. I'm on my way to my vehicle. Mrs. Fugate is parked maybe like 10 feet behind me. Put up the diagram again, please. Okay, just go over to the board. This is a different date, but I yes. just want you to show me where she was and where you were. Okay. Mrs. Fieldgate was parked right about here. She parked right about there, which is opposite your house. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'm parked here. In front of her house. Correct. Okay, so you're both on the same side of the street, which is the defendant's side of the street. You're parked across the street from your house. That's correct. Got it. Go ahead. Okay. What happened? And Mrs. Fieldgate, she comes out of her car. She's walking towards me. She's upset. She's yelling. And I don't remember all of the words that she was saying, but it was about parking. She was telling me I couldn't park where I was parked at. She's yelling, she's screaming. I'm trying okay. to reason with her. Could you step back there? Yes. I'm trying to reason with Miss Fugate. I'm telling her it's a public street and I can park there. She's yelling and screaming and telling me that I can't. We're standing in front of one another. She's still yelling and screaming. I'm trying to reason with her. Next thing I know, she hits me on the hand. My reflux, I pushed her back. Next thing I know, she's still Sorry. standing after I pushed. Next thing I know, I guess she thought about it, and then she made herself fall on the ground. Well, I don't know whether she did or not. Somebody right. said with regard to this that there's a video of this. Video. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. It was just in court. Everything. It wasn't shown in, in court. I, I don't care whether it's shown in court or not. I would like to see, because uh, I read here that there is a security video of it's what happened cam. on... If it's a video, you don't have to go up there, Ms. Fugate, because I can actually see it myself. So now... Those are the two cars parked on the same side of the street, and they are parked on the defendant's side of the street. Yes, ma'am. And your car is the... Black car. Your car is the black car. Their car is the red car. That's correct. And that's Miss Fugate getting out of her car. Okay, yes, now I'd like to see the video. She started to move up. So I thought I'd move my car a little closer. Shh! Don't speak. That's when she... Shh. Okay, I'm going to see that again, please. And I'd like you to do it slowly at some point when they're right in each other's faces and getting very nasty. Oh, no, no, Miss Marshall, you can't do that. It wasn't my intention. Oh, just a second. She oh, it was absolutely your intention. No, it, it was, was absolutely not. your intention, and there no. was... Listen, you know, I'm an equal opportunity abuser. You can't do that. You can't do what I just saw. What I just saw is unreasonable behavior and totally inconsistent to being... Maybe, which I didn't see, slapped on the hand. Right. Maybe slapped on the hand. I didn't see it. But I did see you give her a substantial shove, and she is a person who has a certain infirmity, and she fell. And if she fell, and if she was injured, you're responsible. That's it. I saw you give her a shove that didn't, as you say, she decided to fall back down no matter. You hit her with such force that she fell backward. You, you say no, you I say yes, yeah. I'm a judge, I win.
Jerry and Jeffrey Marshall have accused their neighbors, Joseph and Jennifer Fugate, of damaging their car. Jennifer claims she was assaulted by Sherry over a parking spot. Now, I saw the video. I don't have to have your mother testify. You should have not created an incident, Mrs. Fugate. I did. Yes, no, yes, just a second. Yes, you did. I was walking toward the car, he, and I was to go to my car and pull up because she was starting to pull her car up. If you look, she started to pull her car up first. And then when she come around the car, she's holding her cell phone yelling, I got you on recording. I'm recording you because I'm going to show you a hate crime. Excuse just me. Just a second. Part of the problem is you and your son have to understand that you have no right to the parking spaces that are on a public street, just a sec, in front of your house. And your son clearly is a provocateur in this because he parks his car on their side of the street. I'm not getting, so what I'm doing is I am dissecting this case. If I have two unreasonable people, they're gonna continue to make each other's lives miserable and I can't control that. All I can do is hear each individual side. So Mrs. Fugate, I have already said that Miss Marshall had no right, based upon what I saw, to push you with such force that you fell. I would like to see the medical report after the incident of December 22nd. May I see it, Kevin? I was in the ER, okay. and I had to wear a brace for a month on my arm and shoulder. Did you have any out-of-pocket expense? I paid $900 because it was Christmas holidays. I, all I want to know is, did you have any out-of-pocket expense? Yes, Your Honor. And yes, I had... Shh! What is this? It's a I had to have a woman come in and clean oh, my I house. Oh, I don't care about that. That was out of... I don't care about that. Return that to her. That's a cleaning bill for somebody to come in and clean. Let her clean. Okay. So, filing a false police report and false arrest. Who was arrested? I was. And you were arrested, in my judgment, legitimately because of based upon what I saw. So I'm that, dismissing... That is not why they arrested oh, me. Oh, okay. So that is not... The reason that you were arrested was not this. The reason why I was arrested yeah. is because when she hit me and when I Bring pushed it. her back, when they asked me what happened, I did not tell them that she had struck me. Miss Marshall, is the reason you were arrested based upon the occurrence of December 22nd. That's yes, easy. It, yes, it well, was. Well, that's what I said. So don't say no. The reason you were arrested and claim falsely but I is as a result of the December 22nd incident. But I was cleared. I don't care whether you were cleared or not. I didn't clear you. The burden of proof in a criminal case is proof by beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? That is not the burden of proof in a civil proceeding. It's a much lower standard. I looked at that video. I believe that your conduct was unconscionable. And not hers. You didn't see I think that her you behavior was... Her I think there. that her behavior was stupid. I don't... Yeah. Just a second. I don't see her hitting you. I see you walking away, Miss Marshall. I see you walking away, but I saw you give her a shove that, as you say, she decided to fall back down. No, madam. You hit her with such force that she fell backward. You, you say no, you I say yes, it. I'm a judge, I win. So you, on your case, I said, absolutely, I don't believe him. I don't believe that the damage to your car resulted from his putting his elbow on it. I told him, you have absolutely no right to save a space for your parents. I'm the awarding... The case is malicious. Okay. From what you Fine. saw him do, that's what she did. She installed okay. a camera, set me up, manured me in front of the camera. She knew what she was doing when she hit me on the hand. You're okay, up. very... Oh, Shh, she knew. Just a second. Just a second. All of it is just malicious. Just a second. It's not your judgment that I'm concerned about, madam. I'm telling you, based upon what I saw, I'm awarding Mrs. Fugate, who I think she and her son both have to understand what a public street is. I'm awarding her $2,000 on her counterclaim for her injuries as a result of the assault. I'm dismissing part of your claim for false arrest. I awarded you the $500 that you asked for for your deductible. You got your $500 that's coming off the $2,000 that I've awarded Mrs. Fugate for her injuries, judgment on the counterclaim for $1,500. Thank you very much. We're done. This court is adjourned. 
I wouldn't have never maliciously pushed anybody. I've been trying to tell this story forever. I didn't know what else she was going to do. I was trying to protect myself. It really does harden me that there are people out there that could go and just do this. I have always been friendly. I never bother anyone. They keep bothering us. We're really hoping that this does resolve the issue. I just want them to leave us alone. Bring them to Judy Justice. Because she Justice really does so. care. You want to know how I know that the plaintiff wasn't being truthful when she said that I wasn't being malicious, it was an accident, I did not push her that hard. If that had happened to me and I was just trying to get someone away from me and that reaction from the defendant of falling back, I thought she almost cracked her head on the curb. I would have said, I'm so sorry, oh my goodness, I would have gone down to her, I didn't mean to push you, let me, let me help you up. The plaintiff just walked right back to her car and you could see her face almost had a smirk on it, just walked right back to her car like she didn't even care. And that, to me, says you knew exactly what you were doing when you yeah. put your hands on that woman. Yeah, and I didn't see a slap. It could have happened. I, it was I said too... it could have happened. It could have happened. I just didn't it see did, it. That reaction it was, was an overreaction. Wing dog walker Danielle Lancaster for damages resulting from a dog attack. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case number two zero zero two, Quan versus Lancaster. Mr. Quan, succinctly, your case involves a attack of a dog that was being walked by Miss Lancaster. She was dog walker. She didn't own the dog. Correct. The dog got away from her and, according to you, attacked you, attacked your dog, and you want to be compensated to the tune of $10,000. Correct. You were neither hospitalized, correct? I was not you hospitalized. Were not, you were neither hospitalized, and your dog was not hospitalized. Correct. I assume that you have some medical evidence as a result of this incident to show me that you suffered from a dog bite. Yes. Okay. And the dog bite was from the dog that was being walked by Miss Lancaster. Walked is, I'm not sure if I would use well, the term. She's a dog walker. Yes, she's but it was off walker. leash. She's not the owner of the dog. Correct. The incident happened on what date and time? December 22nd, 2021, at approximately 1.30 p.m. And you were walking your dog, which is what breed? A 20-pound wiener dog mix. And you were a dog walker. How long had you been in charge of walking this dog? Um, at that point, it was about a week. What kind of dog was it? Um, I believe it was a boxer mix. Not 100% sure. How old? Two, three years old, give or take. Who were the owners of the dog? The owners, I can't remember their name. One of uh, Mike, but I don't remember their last names. But um... you remember the owners' names? Yes. And it would be fair to say that you knew their names because you tried to sue them. I contacted them, yes, but did not sue them. And you contacted them because they're the owners of the dog and they have a house. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh is not an answer. Yes. And a house usually has homeowner's insurance. Correct. Correct. And after contacting them, and it's their dog, so they are ultimately responsible for their dog, you opted not to seek compensation for your alleged injuries and this attack, but to sue the dog walker. Correct. Just my own information, Mr. Kwan, do you want to tell me why you did that? Yeah. So per California strict liability law, the anybody who takes physical ownership or responsibility for a dog is also responsible for any sort of attacks or damages it causes while they are uh, responsible for that dog. Regardless okay, just of a second. So what you're saying is in the state of California, if you are walking a dog, and she says she was walking this dog for a week, how many times a day, every day? Uh, two times a day. Twice a day. And she had this job for a week. That under all circumstances, she is responsible for any injury that the dog does. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And what code is that? I have a statute over here. Just um, tell me the statute. Per yeah. California dog bite law. I don't have the number, but I can bring it up to the court. Would you bring it up? The court. It's California Civil Code 3342. You have, do you have it? I could pull it up. I have my notes. Could you it. do? Could you pull it up for me? Mm -hmm. And I'll come back to you in a second, sure. Sarah. I'm just curious about it. Okay, uh, now let's tell me about the incident, sir. Sure. So at the time that I uh, described earlier, I was walking my 20-pound wiener dog mix while my mother walked um, my infant son, who was three months at the time, I in a stroller. Care. Okay. I mean, it's not that I don't care about him <laughs> and I don't care about your mother, but they have nothing to do with this case. Well, well, they do have something to do with this case because when we turned onto the block, I turned and I saw an off-leash dog roughly three times the size of mine. 
and I saw the defendant, Ms. Lancaster. She gave no warning that the dog was off leash, and at that point, the I later learned that the dog... Now, don't tell me. Just tell me what happened, sir. Okay. You saw Ms. Lancaster, and she was walking this dog off leash. Correct. And? She gave no indication. No, no, no. Not that she gave me no indication. Okay. She was walking this dog off leash. Correct. So you saw the dog off leash. Yes. Okay. And, and about how far were you from her when you saw the dog off leash? Across the street. So roughly 40 feet. Okay. And? The dog charged across the street. Okay. The dog ran across the street. Yes. And started aggressively biting, uh, lunging, and barking at my dog. Okay. So at that point, the dog has ran across the street and is in an aggressive stance barking at your dog. Correct. Hadn't touched your dog. Correct. Okay. What happened next? It then diverted its attention towards my infant son in a stroller and my mother and started jumping on the stroller. Did the dog, in fact, jump on the stroller? Yes. And? And my response was to no, try did, to divert the no. attention. What did you do? The dog jumped on the stroller. Yes. Didn't hurt your son, didn't hurt your mother. Yes. So I got the attention of the dog again. How did you do that? By picking up my dog, who was on leash. Well, that doesn't necessarily get attention to the dog. You say, hey, hey, hey. Correct. <laughs> yeah, no. Correct. A, well, a lot you didn't say that. Moment, you just but... picked up your dog. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Probably exclaimed in no, order no, to no, get no, the no. attention I, I, of the you dog. You told me what you did. You picked up your dog and... And started running across the street. Started running... Just a second. Started running across the street in the direction of where the dog had come from? Correct. And at that time, the dog was on the other side of the street. Yes. So let me understand this. You pick up your dog. Your mother is standing behind you in the stroller with your son. You leave your mother, your son, on one side of the street, and you grab your wiener dog mix and run across the street. Correct. This was after I got the attention of the dog, by the way. <laughs> OK. So now you got the attention of the dog. Yes. Ran across the street, so you were trying to divert the dog's attention, and yes. the dog followed you. Yes, it chased me. Good. And you were running in her direction? No. The Miss Lancaster had crossed the street at that point to where we were originally so we, walking. She was on your side of the street. You were going back to where you had initially seen her. Correct. Okay, so she had followed her dog across the street. Yes. Was she saying anything? We at had that repeated point? we made repeated pleas to ask for her no, no, to no, no, control no. the situation. She was she ran across the street, because mm -hmm. all this happened within seconds. Yes. She ran across the street. Was she saying anything she to the was, dog? She was yelling, I'm so sorry, and I can't do anything. OK, is that what you were yelling? Um, I, re I think I was yelling, I'm so sorry, I don't know what to do, because I was in an extreme state of panic. I was probably having a panic okay, attack. OK, I'm so sorry, I don't yeah. know what to do. <laughs> OK, and? And after I ran across the street, when the dog chased me, I fell down. The dog ended up biting me on my left arm. OK, and I'd like to see whatever medical report you have from the bite on your left arm. So the doctor said that... No, don't tell me what the doctor said. <laughs> I haven't... Could I, have, I see... I have a picture. May I see... Absolutely. ...a medical... Rep Did you understand my no. words? I said, may I see a medical report... I do not from have a, a medical report. So you didn't go to the doctor. I The question is, did you go to the doctor, Mr. Point? I did Point? a virtual doctor's Just visit. Because this was during the height of the pandemic. And what was the name of the doctor with whom you had a virtual visit? I do not remember should remember. You're suing for $10,000. You should have all that information. Because if you have a virtual medical visit, Mr. Kwan, there is a record of that. Doctor keeps a record of that. Do you understand? Correct. OK. So now you're down. And this happened, according to you, on December 22nd. Did you get the dog's information? I did. On December 22nd? Yes. When did you speak to the owners of the dog? I spoke to the owners actually that day because I wanted to get the uh, rabies vaccination paperwork. Did you get the rabies vaccination paperwork? Yes. On the 22nd? Yes. Now I'll see your photograph, sir. I have that statute whenever you're ready. I got it. Time is everything. Okay, so the knee injury is when you fell. Correct. And the arm is a combination scratch and maybe tooth mark. Yes, there are tooth marks on there, but not punctures. Well, I don't know. This long thing is not a tooth mark. So just one other question, Mr. Kwan. When 
you told the owners about this on the 22nd. When was the next time you contacted them? First, you wanted to find out whether or not the dog had received rabies shots. You were satisfied that it did, that you didn't have to see a doctor other than a virtual visit with a doctor whose name you don't remember. When did you decide not to sue the owners of the dog, who are homeowners? I wrote have the, homeowners insurance. Yep, I wrote the owners of the dog a demand letter, and that is when I contacted them back, probably about two months after the incident. Okay, so you wrote them a demand letter. Correct. And did they respond to your demand letter? Yes. Do you have copies of those letters? Yes, I do. I'd like to see copies of your letter and their response. That's the demand letter that I... I just want to see copies okay. of your letter and their response. Are they both here? They, did, they, only res they responded by calling me on the phone, not with a formal oh. uh, written statement. Really? Through a series of conversations, I decided that my grievance was not towards them because they were not exhibiting negligence in this situation. Oh, no, I don't believe that, Mr. Kwan. Be very careful about what you say to me, sir. Derek Kwan claims dog walker Danielle Lancaster owes for injuries resulting from a dog attack. Okay. Well, you say the dog's a pit bull. The dog was a pit bull? I believe so. Dog a pit bull? Um, I asked after the incident. I did ask as well if it was a pit bull. They said, no, it's a boxer mix. You have a video of the incident. You have a video. Somebody yes. has a video. Yeah. Correct. Someone's ring camera. Okay. I'm going to allow you to tell me what the owner said in the conversation that they had with you. I'm not accepting it for the truth of the statement, only that you had a conversation with them, which is why you brought this action against Ms. Lancaster today. Correct. So they decided, we're not going to put this in writing. We're going to call Mr. Kwan. Correct. And what did they tell you? They were very amicable about the situation, and were trying to solve the situation right. to make so me whole. Being amicable is subjective. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me what you said to them and what they said to you. What they said to me was that they would look into their homeowner's insurance policy in order to compensate me. Through a series of conversations, I decided that my grievance was not towards them because they were not exhibiting negligence in this situation. Oh, no, I don't believe that, Mr. Kwan. Be very careful about what you say to me, sir. As between homeowners who have insurance and... This young woman who has to walk dogs for a living, if I was somebody interested in $17,000, I wouldn't sue her. I would sue somebody who had... Kathy Bates said in one of my favorite movies, I'm older and I have more insurance. <laughs> so that answer that you just gave me was a whole lot of, who shot John? The reason you decided not to proceed against the dog's owners is what? The, the reason why I proceeded not to go against the dog's owners is because I have a... Um, because some things are more important than money. And in this situation, I have more of an issue with the dog walker and her behavior during this situation rather than being compensated. Well, let me suggest this to you, Mr. Kwan. There is no question that if Miss Lancaster was walking this dog and the dog was off-leash, she was negligent. There's also no question in my mind that the extent of your damages is excessive. Very excessive. So... But, but we're only counting physical damages. Just a second. There. What I'm telling you is the amount of your damages is excessive. And if you wanted anywhere near that money, you could have sued both people. You could have sued the owner of the dog, as not only did they have the dog that attacked you, but they have as Kathy Bates would say, insurance. And you would join the defendant as a party to that action. You would say you're all responsible. You own the dog, which you say was a pit bull, which you say was a pit bull, who just mauled and killed somebody in New York last week. An owner. You didn't do that. So I'm not getting all of this kumbaya business that the person responsible... Do you understand? Yeah, I'm totally just not understand. buying it, Mr. Kwan. We understand each other? Yes, absolutely. Okay. For somebody who has no medic, you had injuries, and you have to be compensated. You had no good excuse for walking the dog off leash. I wasn't walking him off leash. Um, the ha when I was in the house, happened. I had a key on the other side of the door. When I reached for that key, he scooted as hard as I could between my legs and got out. It wasn't that I was walking him and just decided to take him so off the leash. So you were negligent in letting the dog out? Unfortunately, yeah. 
Yes. But the dog had also been out for an hour at the time yes. of the incident. Yeah, because when I was trying to get him back in, um, but many attempts, um, he was very hard to get in. And at that point, I was already having a panic attack, no, very no, no, emotional. No, 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 okay. no, no, Miss Lancaster, let's get it together. Mm -hmm. Let's get it together. Mr. Kwan says that the dog was out for a period of time, and you weren't chasing the dog when he first saw you. You were in a walking mode. I so the dog may have initially gotten out. Miss Lancaster, don't. You, you know, I'm an ecumenical abuser. Were you out with the dog for a period of time? Yes. Did you have a leash in your hand? Uh, I think I um, was... Um is not an answer. At Did you have a leash in your hand? No. How long were you out with the dog? Probably around an hour at that point. Okay. I was trying to get him back in, and twice okay. I did have him okay. by the collar, and he did wasn't he wasn't, having you it. You didn't have him by the collar when he ran across the street. No, but before then, I did. I don't did. care what okay. happened before then. Okay. Before then, I was 21 years old, and I looked great in a bikini. Now, not so much. All right, Mr. Kwan, this letter was written to Miss Lancaster. Correct. I asked you for the letter that you wrote to the owners of the dog. I do not have that with me right now. Could we key up this video that I understand we have? You can see my mother and infant son playing. I am so sorry. Call so so the person that he bit me. I know I will because he bit me too. I know. Just grab him by the neck. I can't. I, he bit me twice on my hand already. I don't know what to do. It's been an hour. I seriously don't know what to do. He bit me twice already. And I tried to get him on the leash and he bit me twice. I don't know what to do. It's I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Can I see the beginning of that and see if you can freeze frame on the dog, please? By the way, you do have a leash in your hand. Yeah, I just realized, yeah, yeah I do have the leash, actually, so. I'm going to walk over to the monitor. So although the statute uses the word owner, there's vicarious liability if someone else assumed responsibility of the dog, even though the statute is clear, it only lists the word owner. But in California, they could be held liable through vicarious liability, a walker. A walker. That assumed responsibility okay. for the animal. Okay. He neither suffered serious physical injury, certainly not serious enough for him not to go to work for a week, unless you model Bermuda shorts. You don't model Bermuda shorts, do you, Mr. Kwan? Just in my spare of time. Of course not. Derek Kwan says dog walker Danielle Lancaster owes for damages after he was attacked by the dog Danielle was walking. Okay, so, Miss Lancaster, it does appear to me that you were sort of overwhelmed by this dog. Yes, but very much so. Bottom line is that Mr. Kwan was injured and frightened, not seriously injured, but seriously enough that if it were me, I would be furious as a result of your negligence. And he neither suffered serious physical injury, certainly not serious enough for him not to go to work for a week. I don't know what kind of work you do, but not serious enough unless you, I don't know, unless you model Bermuda shorts. You don't model Bermuda shorts, do you, Mr. Kwan? Just in my spare time. Of course not. And you had no medical bills because you didn't see a doctor, but you were attacked. And I actually don't know why you didn't sue the owners of this dog, which looks scarcely like any boxer I've ever seen. And it is possible in California that certain dogs are not insurable. I don't know the answer to that question. So it will not insure you in a homeowner's policy if you have a certain kind of dog. Are you familiar with that, sir? Yes. What are you familiar with? You're very familiar with statutes. So what is the law in California with regard to insurance? Can you be 
denied insurance or have to pay an excess premium if you have a dog that is either a pit bull or a pit bull mix? I believe so. You believe so. And would it be a fair statement, sir, that their homeowners either covered their dog or didn't? They were looking into it, and they had renter's insurance that I believe um, covered it. That you believe covered it? Oh, very foolish of you not to go against them. Okay. If you accept responsibility for a dog, you're supposed to be smart enough to look at a dog and say, you know what, why would you ask what kind of dog this is? Now, you let the dog out, and the dog was out with you for an hour. Yes. Yeah. And during that time, you were walking around the neighborhood, and you had sufficient opportunity. You were walking around the neighborhood. I wouldn't say walking. I what was were you doing? clearly trying to get the dog back in, and twice I did have him by the collar, and that's what I said in the video. I had him by the collar, and then both times he turned to, to nip at me on, on my wrist, so which is why I let go, because you didn't I didn't want to get, want to get bit. I know. You said... So I was twice. trying to have him follow me, which is what the owners told me to do. I had treats so you in my hand. the owners? Yes, I did call and the... You, said to, you called the owners yes. and you told the owners what was going on. Yes, I did. They knew what was going on. Uh, I would have sued the owners. Mr. Kwan, I would have absolutely sued the owners unless they didn't have insurance that covered the dog, which is a problem for them if they had renter's insurance. In any event, Ms. Lancaster, you assumed responsibility of this dog, and based upon your own negligence, your negligence, forget about the dog's breed, forget about the, these other people. As a result of your negligence, he was injured, and you have to compensate him for that. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $5,000. We're finished. Court is adjourned. I don't think he even got bit. The doctor said that most of my injuries were emotional, but I did receive a bite from the dog onto my arm, but not a puncture wound. I think he just, you know, wanted some extra cash from me because that was probably an easier target. Even though I didn't have any physical injuries, who knows how long my night terrors will last for. I was literally having the whole panic attack, which is why, you know, I had the reaction I did. Yeah, I totally understand that, but the dog was off leash for an hour. She could have called the police or animal control during that time. Don't open the door even in the slightest to a dog. Just wait till, you know, they're away and gone. Mostly my MO is getting back at those that I have grievances against. Let's not even get started with dog breed, because I think the world knows where I live in that street. Mm -hmm. And 10 days ago, a woman who was watching a pit bull for one of her children, 64-year-old woman, her husband came home from work and found the dog eating her in the backyard. Sadly, she died. And there are certain breeds that are more dangerous than others. People have to recognize that. And if you choose to get a dog that is potentially more dangerous, Sarah, <laughs> you know, and I know that there are pit bull lovers out there and say, mine is the sweetest, mine is the loveliest, but then you have to accept responsibility if there's an issue. And clearly this dog was an issue because I believe this young woman. Mm -hmm. Didn't you believe her? I believed her, and I think that dog walkers should also be cautious of what animals they're choosing to walk because she could be held vicariously liable, so you might want to stick to five-pound chihuahuas yeah, from now right, on, maybe. Right. I mean, she was visibly very Stressed. upset. Visibly, and she said on the video, he bit me twice yeah. on the hand because she tried to get a hold mm -hmm. of him. But she was still out with the dog for an hour. But he was, in fact, injured. Mm -hmm. And whether he went to the hospital or not, that's pretty traumatic. Yeah. I don't think you can level it down to actual damages from a bill, but there's some component of punitive damages as well for the pain and suffering and trauma from yeah. an event like that. That's true. But f forget falling down and being attacked by a dog. Our family would feel as if, you know, you've got a splinter in your hand as a result of somebody's negligence or a nail that went into your foot as a result mm -hmm. of somebody being careless is very frightening. Anyway, people have to use their noodle, and your noodle is up here. Is suing homeowners Jeff McNally and Angela Klingenberg for property damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2164, Ritter versus McNally Klingenberg. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Ritter, you own a piece of property. That is correct, Your Honor. And it's a residential piece of property? That is correct. And you use it as a business? That is correct. I would assume that this is your tenant. That is correct. Perfect. <laughs> Could you stand up next to Mr. Ritter? What is your last name? Mason. Mason. These are your neighbors across the street? Yes. I live side by side. So you're side by side, not across the street? I live across the street. Now, there came a time, Miss Mason, 
that you heard something that was unusual. Can you describe what you saw? I was startled by the sound of a big thud and my dog freaking out and ran to the window. And so I jumped up, ran to the window where the dog as well was running toward and looked out the window and seen the uh, truck that had just hit the air conditioning unit. Could you describe the truck? A white truck pickup. Had you seen that car before? Yes, in the driveway next door to me. So in his driveway? Yes. Did you see who was driving the truck? I did. Was it Mr. McNally? It was not. Who was it? The young lady beside him. Friends across the street. Klingenberg? Yes. When you looked outside, what did you see the truck do next? As I looked out the window and made eye contact, I seen... With her? Yes, I seen Jeff at the back end of the truck, right by the AC unit, kind of backing her off a little bit, kind of gave her a raised hand. So he was out there as well? Yes, positioned behind the truck. What did you do? Well, I jumped up and then I ran and um, actually grabbed my phone to take pictures because I did not want to be responsible for what had just happened to the air conditioning unit because I could tell it had been moved and hit. Do you have those photographs? Um, I did send those to Bob. He has pictures of those. Kevin? Yes. Want to get them? I immediately text Bob as well, this letting is... him know. So that day, the yes. 20th of August, you went, took photographs of the truck? Yes, ma'am, and the yard and the air conditioning unit. Okay. Mr. McNally. Yes, Your Honor. Where had you been camping? We were camping in a place called McCall, Idaho. Aside from you and Miss Klingenberg, who were there? My son. See how easy this is? <laughs> it's going to get easier. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> OK. Now, is this your girlfriend? Yes. OK. Now, now we got that clear. <laughs> this is your girlfriend. You and your girlfriend were camping. Your son was with you. And what you were doing that day was you were trying to unload the truck with the camping gear, correct? Correct. Is the camping gear heavy? Yes. So somebody was driving the truck and somebody was schlepping the stuff out of the truck to put it away, right? Correct. Now, Mr. McNally, you don't want me to believe that either you or stand up, stand up, or this guy were just twiddling your thumbs and you backed up the truck so that you left Miss Klingenberg to empty the truck, right? No. You don't want me to believe that. No. Because that wouldn't be true. And that would be foolish and that would make you certainly unchivalrous, right? <laughs> Correct, Your Honor. Okay. So when you were first confronted with this, you said, oh, my girlfriend wasn't driving. Right? Right. So let's get it straight now, because that's what you wrote here in your answer. Oh, my girlfriend wasn't driving, my son was driving. That's not true. I don't know why you would choose to say my son was driving, not my girlfriend, unless she doesn't have a driver's license, because otherwise there'd be no difference whether your truck was being driven by you or your son or your girlfriend. Do you understand? No difference. Your truck being driven with you around hit his air conditioning unit. So what difference does it make? You have a driver's license? I do not. There you go. Perfect. I was not driving, Your Honor. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. You were driving, and he says you were. You see, and he no. says you, just a second. You didn't see his face just now. He says you were. Now, how did I know you didn't have a driver's license? Do you have a driver's license? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but how did I know you didn't? Where do you think I got that from? We I got that from common sense. Because Mr. McNally doesn't look like a stupid man. And there would be really no difference if he drove the car, you drove the car, the son drove the car, the car, his car caused damage. But in order to perhaps have insurance cover it, if he had insurance on the truck, do you? My insurance had Do actually elapsed. What? OK. So it really didn't make any difference. If you had no insurance, you could have said she was driving. <laughs> but didn't think that far. OK, so that's why we're here. We're here because you let an unlicensed driver drive your truck that was uninsured that you took on a camping trip. Is this coming together for me? It's close. So now we got that straight, right? The next thing we have to take care of are the damages. I see that the outer part of this air conditioning unit was definitely hit. Now, the outside is merely a cover. So I need some evidence that this damage that he caused while she was driving 
damage the mechanism of the air conditioner because you replace the unit and you want him to be responsible for the unit, right? That is correct, Your Honor. I have to see a photograph because I don't have this photograph of the inside of this. I just have the photograph of the cover. I do not have the inside, but I do have from two HVAC companies that did go out to service it. One that did the replacement, the other that came out. Second opinion, as Jeff had asked us to do, which we did. Okay, I'd like to see it. This will be the second, and this is the actual invoice for payment. Oh, this is the second opinion. This says, second opinion call, four-year-old Goodman air conditioning unit has been backed into. The unit has permanent damage to the condenser coil. Oh, well, that's the unit itself. That's just not the lipstick on it. That's the guts of it. This says, immediate repair, replace condenser coil and damaged panels, 3961. Correct. Replacing the unit instead may be an option to consider. And to do the whole job, what did he want, $5,000? The other side, $3,450 to replace the identical unit. That okay, and to repair... It was less he, money, money to, to replace, replace it. to repair. Correct. Okay. Do you understand that now? I do. Okay. Thank you, So. Robert. Based upon your request, he got a second opinion. Second opinion was for more money to repair. He chose the lesser of the two, which is to replace the unit. The ball is in your court, sir. Garrett was actually driving. I don't believe it. You've had some time to reprocess it all. You would have had the boy, that's what you raised them for, mm -hmm. strong boys. You wouldn't have said, well, you just sit in the car while my girlfriend unloads it. Hair out of your eyes so I can see your eyes. Perfect. And later today. I want to know how much you received from the insurance company. 8 Then can you tell me I had a check from the insurance company which was a little over $1,300 from their appraisal? No, that's incorrect. Well, that's what you wrote, madam. That's your signature. That's what you wrote. Robert Ritter claims homeowners Jeff McNally and Angela Klingenberg owe for property damage after hitting his air conditioner. Your car, uninsured as it was, driven by your girlfriend, damaged his property. Why don't you think that you're responsible for it? I uh, don't believe we hit it. The damage is on your truck, sir. There's a picture of your truck here. You want to see it? Or you don't have to see it. You'd be better off just saying, you know what? I don't have the money. You'd be better off just saying, because we started out wrong, you and I, Mr. McNally. And the wrong started off was claimed his son was driving, even though Regina clearly saw his girlfriend. Okay, so that was a fib here. Actually, Your Honor, if, you, if I may, there was uh, just one front seat, a bent seat, and she was sitting in the middle, and Garrett was actually driving. I don't believe it, sir. You've had some time to reprocess it all. That's not true. She was driving because if you were unloading the truck, you would have had the boy, that's what you raised them for, mm -hmm. strong boys. You wouldn't have said, well, you just sit in the car while my girlfriend unloads it. You wouldn't have said that. Put your hand down. Take the hair out of your eyes so I can see your eyes. Perfect. Thank you. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,800. It's not a good idea, Mr. McNally, to show your son that it's the right thing to do not to tell the truth. That's a very good lesson that parents should teach their children right from the get-go. And accepting responsibility for what was clearly an accident. I mean, she didn't mean to back into his air conditioner, right? Right. It happened. It was an accident. That's why they don't call it an on purpose. It was an accident. But once you have an accident, you have to accept responsibility. That's what you want to teach him. And if he lifts his hair, he'll be able to see and be able to hear better. <laughs> We're done. Thank you. This court is adjourned. We were all sitting in the front of the bench seat, so I was in the middle, and I think when she initially came out, she saw me sitting in the truck, but maybe she assumed I was sitting in the driver's seat, but I wasn't. No, nope, um, my vision was great that day. It did jump, make me jump, and my dog was freaking out, so I definitely knew something hit the house. I told him that my son and I were emptying firewood and that he may have hit his 
AC unit. It's just sad, you know, that they had to do that and that the young man had to be involved when he really didn't do it. That case was a great demonstration of how being well prepared and doing the right thing can make the justice system work for you in the right way. He had all of his evidence laid out exactly how he needed to present it to you and he had the damage evidence, he had the photographs, and he did the right thing. He didn't try and get a whole new unit for the $5,000. He said, I'll get the two estimates if that's what you want me to do. So it just shows how being prepared and having all your ducks in a row can really benefit you when you come into a court system. But my problem was telling the lie after you've sworn to tell the truth mm -hmm. in front of his son. Because those things remain embedded in your children. You want to be a good parent. The first thing you have to teach your children is to be honest. And if he sees that his father and the father's girlfriend are dishonest, that will become part of his fabric. Yeah. That's a mistake. So, I agree. But I think you are correct that it was a good lesson in preparing a case that made it easier to try. True. Case 2171, Cosby versus Warren. All parties, please step forward. Shalea Cosby is suing mechanic Kevin Warren for the repair cost of a car and lost wages. Okay, Ms. Cosby. According to your complaint, you parked your car near your home on a side street. You came out the next day and you found your car vandalized. Mm -hmm. the car was a 2017 Hyundai Elantra. Correct. Did you buy the car new or used? Used. And how much did you pay for the car? I put a down payment of thirteen fifty, I believe, thirteen fifty. So you finance the whole thing? Yes. And you have to have insurance on your car. You have to have liability, collision, all that other good stuff because you have a loan. Right. And you did have insurance. Mm -hmm. Now came out, you looked at your car and it was vandalized. What was wrong with it? The back window was shattered and along the side passenger top quarter panel, back passenger door in the passenger mirror, it was shot. You have photographs of it? Yes. I'd like to see right here. Okay, did you notify your insurance company? I did. On what date? The same exact date, which was July 22nd, is when I came out and found my car vandalized. I submitted a police report. I have that right here. I'd like to take a look at it, please. And, um... Okay, nothing with nothing. Okay, so you told the police about it on the 22nd. Yes. And when did you bring it in for the defendant to take a look at it? That was August 18th. She brought the car into you in August? Yes. And how long have you been in the auto repair business? 16 years. So you've dealt with insurance adjusters before? Yes. And did you make the appointment for the insurance adjuster to come and look at the car? They never came to look at it. Sometimes they just have me submit photos if they don't have anyone in the field to come look at the vehicle. Okay. Now, when the plaintiff came in and brought you the car, did you have a discussion with her? Yes, I did. And I want you to tell me the best of your recollection what she told you and what you told her. Okay, like she said, she brought me the vehicle on August 19th, and she told me she took it from another shop. She had a problem with another shop, getting the repairs done. Tell me what kind of problem you had with another shop. It was no problems with the other shops besides they didn't want to do the estimate on it and told me to talk to my insurance about it. And my insurance told me to find my own shop, and that's when I found Just it. Just a second. Did your insurance company send you to the first shop that you went to? Yes. And for some reason, that first body shop was unsatisfactory to you. Mm -hmm. So you took it to the defendant. This is what the story is. The story is the defendant still has your car, right? Mm -hmm. And he's keeping your car because he says you didn't pay for the repairs. It's your position that you gave him the entire check from the insurance company. Is that your position? Speak. Be very careful what you tell me. This is how her car looks. Oh. She brought it to me. Oh, Miss Cosby, I have a feeling that you're not going to like the outcome of this. Oh, no, I'm legit all the way around. Oh, so, really? Those are the after work Shh, Just pictures. a second. Hustler. Oh, it's not a hustler hustle. at all, man. Absolutely a hustle. Shalea Cosby claims mechanic Kevin Warren owes for the repair cost of a car and lost wages. The insurance check went to you Correct. to cover the damage to the car. Correct. I'd like to see the check 
receipt that you received from the insurance company. Look, we're going to have trouble with each other, madam. Do you understand? This isn't the only check you got from the insurance company. If you're How talking much? about a check in 2020, that has no relevance to 2022 vandalism check. I want to know how much you received from the insurance company. 874 Then can you tell me, I had a check from the insurance company, which was a little over $1,300 from their appraisal. No, that's, that's incorrect. Well, that's what you wrote, madam. That's what you wrote. That's your signature, that's what you wrote. I see the paper. The totaling was thirteen seventy four fifty three. I didn't receive a full thirteen seventy four fifty three check from my insurance. I received eight seventy four fifty three and had to pay my deductible of five hundred dollars. When you brought your car into Mr. Warren, tell me what the conversation was. Before I got to him, I let him know what was going on, what I was going through. No, not let him know. I asked you what you said to him and what he said to you. First of all, you didn't like the first place that the insurance company sent you to. I don't know why. All I know is when you're dealing with this kind of thing, everybody's trying to make a little bit extra. And it's been my experience, and maybe I'm wrong, that when you have a little accident, you take your car into a body shop. Very often, if that's their business, they say, this is what you want fixed, this is what the damage was. And the person who runs the body shop or the owner of the body shop will say to you, I'll take whatever the insurance is, I'll work with the adjuster. Mm -hmm. That's what they usually do. Correct, sir? Yes. Yes. And in this case, is that what happened? No. Is what I'm asking you. Because your complaint is that he has your car, won't give it back because he's put a mechanics lien on it because he says that he did $6,000 worth of work on the car. He did work that was not approved by me just nor a second. my insurance. That, I'm just telling you, that's what he says. He did $6,000 worth of work on the car. Okay. Okay? But I have to tell you, Mr. Warren, that that has been my experience, and I'm very old that when you take a car in that's been in an accident, they say, you know what, I'll work with your insurance company. And we all know what that means. That means that whatever your insurance company gives you, they'll send me the check. That will be what I'm going to accept for the work. Now, what you're suggesting is that she authorized you to do $6,000 worth of work, and you didn't speak to the insurance company. I spoke with them plenty of times. Oh, what did they tell you that they were sending her? I have it here. I'd like to see it. I have three estimates here. No, no, I want to see from the insurance company. They're, no, they're, they're the insurance company estimates, not mine. I'd like to see it. Okay, here's the first one. Like she said, when she first brought her car to me, she had this one already for 873. Mm -hmm. Okay, three. so then what we do when we see more damage, we put what you call a supplement in. So I put a supplement in, and that's when they told me she has two claims. She has a claim for the auto body damage and a claim for the vandalism. The 874 is for the vandalism. If you look at these other two estimates, it's a totally different claim number. May I see that, it, please? That she put the claim in for. Mm -hmm. So these other two are for the, the auto body portion. Not for the vandalism? No, it's two different claims. When she brought you the car, was there body damage on the car? Absolutely. This oh, is how the car looked see, when she brought it to me. Can I see? I'm not just talking about that. Can I see, please? This is how her car looked oh. when she brought it to me. Oh, Miss Cosby, I have a feeling that you're not going to like the outcome of this. Oh, no, I'm legit all the way around. Oh, so, really? Those are the afterwards. Shh, just pictures. a second. Just a second. This car was in a bad accident. Yes, correct. This car was in a bad accident. Hey! This car was in a bad accident shortly after you got it. Correct. Right. And you got a check from the insurance company to fix this. Right. How much was the check that you got from the insurance company to fix the this? The total in amount, I'm not sure, but I think it was like 2001 or 2002. And you didn't have it fixed. No one wanted to fix it. Well, he fixed so it. I... Just a second. Hey, Miss Cosby, mm -hmm. he fixed it. Without just, my just approval. A... What did you do with the $2,000? Oh, I paid my own personal bills because no one wanted to fix the car, so I have to keep living. Your case is dismissed. Okay. How's that? That's Your fine. case. Hustler. Oh, it's not a hustler hustle. at all, man. Hustler. Absolutely. Absolutely a hustle. That's I fine. actually think you're a That's hustler. That's why I'm not helping That's you. That's fine. Because you had an accident in 2020. You got a check from the insurance company to fix it. I don't know how much that check was because you don't have a copy of that check. You brought the car into him and said, now I have a broken back window. I have a feeling, and I know it's only a feeling, but... 
this is my program so I can vent that feeling, that you went to the first place to fix the car and you said to them, I want you to fix the front and the back, and they said no. That was for something else. You already got That's paid for incorrect. that. They so didn't you went want to him. estimate oh, altogether. Oh, oh, yeah, I don't believe you. You don't have to. I don't. Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't. don't have to. That's why your case is dismissed. That's fine. Now I'm getting to your counterclaim. Because you put a mechanics lien on the car? Yes, I have it here. Great. So, you've got a mechanics lien on it. She can't sell it. I'm not giving it back to her. I'm not ordering it back to her. You have the car? Yes. Sell it. I need that signature on that paper to be able to do so. It doesn't matter. From whom? From her. Or you can sign it just to sell Oh, I to, can't. To turn over. Oh. They said she has no more interest in the car. I can't. She does have an interest. The car's got a lien on it, sir. Absolutely. Okay? You're going to have to pay off this note. Do you understand? I don't think you're going to be able to get the money after you pay off the note. But you fix the car. Absolutely. And I think that you're entitled to money for fixing the car on your counterclaim. She's going to pay on your counterclaim because I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to get any money on this car. I don't know what's going to happen with this car. I'm just not returning it to her. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm going to try to make you as close to whole as you can be because I think what happened to you was a hustle. That's what I think. Usually, usually I don't side with mechanics. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> just, it's just been my experience. But I think that... I'm glad you changed I, today. I think that this is a hustle. $3,800, judgment for the defendant on the counterclaim. Thank you very much. It's We're done. Sure. Oh, I appreciate her decision. I believe she she ruled the right decision because I brought all my paperwork and it wasn't it wasn't another way to, to rule it. Well, she she said she wanted me to help her get her car fixed and that she was gonna get the insurance and pay me like she was supposed to do. But I guess once she got the money, she changed her mind. All mechanics aren't bad. That was a surprise. That was for me. <laughs> Did for not me. think it was gonna go that way when we reviewed it earlier. When we talked about, it, I looked at it when we spoke about it. I said, you know, sort of using my life's history. Okay. Take the car in, don't worry, I'll work with the insurance company, does a little bit more work, the insurance company sends a check for a little less. But he wasn't at fault, she was the hustler. Yeah, he wasn't trying to make an extra quick buck like a lot of mechanics that we've seen. He did no. the work. He did the work.